This program features live coverage of an African safari and may include animal kills and carcasses. Viewer discretion is advised. Good afternoon and welcome to the Sunset Safari. And of course, I'm on the banks of the Great Mara River waiting for the migration to arrive. My name is Taylor McCurdy and on camera with me today is Archie. You'll know because he likes to do that with his thumb. Anyways, now for those of you that have never joined us on one of these live and interactive safaris, welcome and uh, thank you for stumbling across this, uh, our wonderful site. Remember, you can talk to us because this is live and it's happening right now. I'm in Kenya. Then Jamie's also in Kenya, and so is Scott, and you'll meet the rest of the team down in South Africa. So hashtag Safari Live on Twitter, or you could also talk to us via the YouTube chats. But for all you very new and confused viewers wondering why there is a dead wildebeest in the water, well, that's because at some point there was a crossing here. And I think that this wildebeest carcass washed downstream a few days ago because this is about the second day that we've seen it here wedged on the rocks. And it is very much bloated at the moment and it doesn't smell very nice at all. Archie, if you could use one word to describe what uh, this wildebeest smells like, what would you say? Run away. You run away. Luckily, Archie's at work and can't run away. <laughs> but every now and then... The the, will, the wind swirls and we get a horrible scent of this um, carcass. So, yes, and there's lots of crocodiles around, but I think that they're just very full. I did mention that um, this morning that uh, the crocs that are here are fairly well fed because this is where we were watching the first of uh, the zebra sort of crossing well, between main crossing and Quechua crossing. So there's that one crocodile. And there are lots more. They're around, but I think their bellies are just so full. So they're not, you know, ravenous at the moment and too... Uh, perturbed that there are a couple of carcasses floating about. Again, it's marinade, they're going to get soft and tender and the crocodiles are just going to find them delicious. Thankfully, neither of us have to eat rotten wildebeest carcass. It's not very nice. Wildebeest is actually quite tasty to eat if you're into that kind of thing. It's actually really nice. Right, anyways, even though the migration is not quite happening down at the river, it seems as though Scott has found it. Well, we're probably about 15, 20 miles away from Taylor over here. We are right at the base of the Olololo Escarpment, looking east towards where Taylor is. And as you can see, we've also got some wildebeest and zebra here. My name is Scott, and I'm teamed up with jean -Dre on camera this afternoon. So we've come out into this area in the hope that we are going to find the Owino Pride of Lions. It comprises of two lioness and three youngsters that are just over a year of age now and this was the last area we saw them in early yesterday morning but we are not too sure where they may have gone since where we last saw them and we actually saw them kind of heading from right to left in towards this belt of forest that you can see over here and that is a riverbed hence all of the big trees that are growing alongside it and they could be somewhere in there somewhere exactly kind of where those eddies are heading now is where the lines were moving so it's hard to say or guess where they could have gone from here if they have in fact gone at all and the reason I say they may have not gone anywhere is because the sausage tree pride of lioness has been in the exact same spot for four entire days now which is quite interesting but not uncommon when lion kind of settle in an area where the migrating herds have reached. So both of these prides are actually well out of their normal territories and they've pushed into this area where the wildebeest are. It'll be interesting to see how long they stay here before they move back into kind of their more usual neck of the woods which is further north of where we are here. Very good. Well, everyone, I'm also very happy to see all of you without any gremlins. The last, since we've been going live here in the Mara, each afternoon that we've tried, we've had some kind of an issue. So it hasn't really gone too well, but so far today, everything is going very well. Now we just need to find the lines or something else interesting along the way. So those, well, that is my plans for the afternoon. And... We're going to probably spend a little bit more time here just scanning with the old binoculars. And while we do that, we are going to be sending you all the way down to South Africa to Mr. Sydney, who is on foot. 
A very, very good afternoon and welcome to the beginning of our guided walk this afternoon. I am Sydney and I am not traveling alone this afternoon. I am traveling with Herbert, my game scout, as well as Sebastian, who is my camera operator. I am here by the Galago Pen in order to try and investigate the tracks for the animals who has recently been here looking for some water. But where I am now, I can pick up a very distinctive smell from the elephants. Elephants has been here earlier on, but according to the wind direction, which is going towards my favor at the moment I can smell that in this area here the elephants are somewhere in between the dry river beds I am here my plan was not to look for the elephants is to look for Hosanna as well as Tingana as here is where I left the fresh tracks earlier this morning before I saw a very fantastic elephant head so now here I'm sure I will get guided by the good tracks Oh, yes, the elephants are in the area. I can see the movement over there. Can you see that? I saw a little bit of movement of the elephant body going much more towards the northern side. So now let's see. Let's plan the approach direction nicely, and then we take it from there. The wind is on my favor at the moment. It's blowing from the northern side of the uh, game reserve towards the southern side uh, of the Galago Pen. So now I am going to just discuss a little bit with Herbert and see how we are going to approach. Let's see. Uh, Tristan is also out at the moment on a game drive. Let's see what his plan is. I am indeed, Sydney. We're on a very bumpy game drive as we try and get up this hill. And so now that we've negotiated that, I can actually say good afternoon properly. So as Sydney mentioned, my name is Tristan. And on camera, I've got Senzo this afternoon, which is always wonderful to have him aboard. And well, as Sydney said, we are out on drive and we are going to be giving him a hand with Hosanna Tingana. We're north of where Sydney is at the moment. I've just checked the boundary just to double check that Tingana didn't cross outwards or Hosanna for that matter haven't found any sign just yet difficult to say though because lots and lots of cars have driven the boundary today including including a not including because that's not a word at all including a rather large tractor and so that could have squashed a number of tracks so we'll just have a little double check around and see if maybe on this little game paths that come out of these drainage lines there might be some tracks for a male leopard walking around here I'm pretty sure Tingana maybe has crossed, but Hosanna I doubt. I think Hosanna is probably not too far from this area. So we're going to double check and just drive nice and slow as we go along and hope that we find some footprints or some alarm calls somewhere. Tea Heart, it is very gloomy. I'm not going to lie to you. I was going to try to put a positive spin onto your gloomy comments, but there's not much positivity when it comes to the gloominess of this afternoon. It is cold, it is windy, it is cloudy. It is not my kind of weather at all. But I suppose it's not bad for the cats. The cats will thoroughly enjoy this weather because it's a great place, or well, a great um, condition to have hunting take place so you'll find that they'll go out at night and they'll try and position themselves so that they can actively hunt oh did we disturb you squirrel sorry so there's a little squirrel that's racing along it's gone now all the way down and is shifting gears towards the termite mound there we go up it goes a rather shy squirrel that just bolted across oh and some zebras that's quite nice i didn't see them behind the termite mound they've just appeared also going north with some impalas as well which is quite nice i haven't seen zebras for a few days the last time i actually saw zebra tracks was when those three lions were following the zebras a few days ago and, and stalking them so nice to see some zebras mobile around and they're going to need to be very careful tonight we were talking about that there is going to be cats hunting and well the Inkahuma pride which was seen this morning they wouldn't mind themselves a little zebra meal and so if they're around and they pick up any scent of these zebras i think these zebras are going to be in for a little horrid evening and this con apparently the weather is not going to change much in the next two days so it's going to continue to be quite difficult for them over the course of the few days that come but it looks like a stallion group so it looks like three males that are together it's quite common to find these little bachelor herds where you get males that join up um, particularly 
you know younger males they'll they'll shift out and and have a look it might be that i'm wrong it's quite difficult to see where i'm sitting at the moment but it looks like all boys yes the one in the middle definitely is a boy and the one on the left looks like a boy as well so i would imagine if you've got two boys next to each other like that the third one is probably as well now the, how we tell the difference between them is between their legs the male has a basically a very thin black stripe that comes down between their back legs and the female will have this big thick black line that comes down it's quite actually quite easy to see when you see male and female next to each other so it looks like a, just a young group of males that potentially has been chased out by a stallion and that's why it's just the three of them and one why they've cleverly latched themselves onto a nice big impala herd because between them and the impalas the more eyes and ears the better it's going to be to avoid being preyed upon by the inkahumas and even potentially a leopard although a leopard would do very well to bring down a zebra of that size that's not an easy target at all a zebra fights back quite heavily and so you probably find that they'll try and avoid zebras as much as possible but you never know they might be hunting impalas and the zebras can help the impalas be like being around anyway it sounds like Sydney has already gotten off to a rollicking start and while he hasn't found Hosanna and Tingana he's found something just as epic to see on foot I have got one of the largest land mammal at the moment this is very much exciting look at that I do have the elephants as we are seeing right there now stationary feeding no problems the wind is coming towards my direction it is quite a lot of them there as I can hear quite a lot of trees breaking down that side so the elephants can hear very, very well. You can see they've got such very big ears. So that's why now I'm trying to lower my voice a little bit so that they cannot easily detect my presence. Unless the wind changes direction, that is when they will know that we are right here at this spot at the moment. You can see now that elephant stopped feeding, not too sure if maybe it's an intention decision in order to investigate what is happening now. This is lovely, look at that. This is a very nice close contact. So elephants, they are very much peaceful animals, only when they've got small babies and when they've got injuries. Yes, also when the bull is on mast, that is when their behavior can easily change a little bit. But most of the animal behaviors is modified by what is happening in their surrounding. Look at that. This animal is stationary feeding and is not worried about our presence at all. So the animals, such as the elephants, they eat less grass and more big bushes. They eat less grass and more trees. So they don't have to balance. Grasses doesn't contain a lot of protein. So the grasses only gives them 8% of proteins, 4% uh, of proteins. 8% of protein is coming from the trees, from the big vegetation. Jack, the elephants, they also got a natural human fear. What the elephants likes the most is a reasonable long distance. They don't want a close contact unless you're gonna go and approach them close and leave before they detect your presence. Yeah, it seems like it's quite a lot of them here. He's not the only one feeding in this area at the moment. I can hear just a lot of rubbing against trees and quite a whole lot of breaking down bushes. So now James, my other colleague, has been successful. This is a great afternoon. He got some lions at the moment. Let's see how the lions are doing. It wasn't tremendously hard to be successful because we knew exactly where they were. They have not moved since this morning. Good afternoon to you. I hope that you are all full of joy and uh, the, well, I suppose for many of you, the joys of the end of the summer. My name is James Henry. On camera today we have Craig the ba Batman Craig. He's just flung his finger past the um, 
lens there. And this is the Inkohuma Pride. Is it all of them? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, it is. I think there are eleven there, stuffed into a tiny little space. If you would like to know anything about the Unkahuma Pride, you can use the hashtag Safari Live on Twitter. Otherwise, you can use the chat stream on YouTube to ask us any questions, send us any comments, insult us at will, tell us jokes if you'd like to do that too. We'll sit with these lions for the next little while and see what happens with them. That is the young male who has just got the scraggly beard of adolescence. He will shortly have acne and be talking nervously to girls, looking at his shoes while he talks to them. That's basically how it goes for an adolescent mammal. Certainly how it went for me anyway. Karen, you say you love this pride. Well, you wouldn't be alone there, Karen. We have to love this pride, of course, because it's the only pride we see from most of the time. We do see the Styx pride as well, sometimes Torchport pride, and once or twice the Talamatis. But this is definitely our favourite pride. And when I got here, it was a bit of a sad bunch. In fact, it wasn't too sad when I got here. When I got here, it was about eight or nine of them. And then it became a very sad bunch because half of them were murdered by the Birmingham boys. And I think it went down to just the yeah, it went down to just the five lionesses at one stage. And now it is eleven. One of which the young male is going to have to depart in the next year or so. Probably eighteen months. I've yet to have a decent view of Amber Eye, so why I wake wait for her to wake up. Let's go back to Sydney who is braving the weather and the storms with the elephants. I can see a mother and a calf now feeding together right ahead of me and the little one is just very much relaxed. The advantage of the little one to feed together with the, with the mother there is that now that the trees are very dry, when the mother is trying to drag down the bushes and break down branches, little one can easily access those kind of branches. But at the moment, I can promise you, the sighting is very much stationary and it is a lovely sighting. These elephants are not even aware about our presence so far. This is quite a lovely sighting. And here where they are, they are not very far away from the water hole. The water hole is just about 250 to 300 meters away from them. So if you can check here, the trees that we are seeing them feeding on is the trees that are growing much more by the dry river bed. So the dry river beds during the rainy season is where a lot of water is flowing, which means this area underground is not completely dry. There is still quite a lot of moisture which is supporting the growth of these trees. So the young elephants is the ones that sometimes likes to charge a lot because they still have got that quite a lot of testosterone, more especially the teenagers. Rosalind, the elephants can be very much aggressive, especially after such a very long period of pregnancy of 22 months. If you get close to their little ones, they are going to charge you. They are going to trumpet and they will mock you. Elephants can run very fast. They can be very much aggressive. Sometimes they do like this. They, they will grab a stump like this and throw it right onto your vehicle. They have done that to me. At one stage, elephant picked up a branch and threw it to my vehicle while I was on a game drive. So I am going to hang around this area because it's where I saw the tracks for Hosanna and Tingana and see if maybe we can get one or one of those two cats. But for now, let's see, James is still standing by by the, lo by the lion sighting. I am still standing by by the lions. One lion seems to be trying to eat his own foot. It's a bit strange. The 
Well, that one's also eating its own feet. There are two, two lions that are trying to eat their own feet. Yeah, that's the one I was talking about, but I didn't see the other one, Craig. And um, what's interesting is that she's sticking her claws out and then kind of licking in between them. Now, I mean, the potential for damage there to the tongue, I would imagine, is enormous because those claws are tremendously, tremendously sharp. But anyway, she's not afraid, licking away as she is. The claws sheath now, the claws have been wreath sheathed. Jessica, yes, most likely all of these lions are related. Certainly the six youngsters are related to the five lionesses because they are offspring of those five lionesses. And not all of them, not all of the lionesses have got offspring. And it's most likely, in fact highly likely, almost certain, that the other lionesses are related. I don't know if there are actually any litter mates I'm not sure if there are any litter mates here. They certainly could be sisters or cousins, though. But they're definitely all related. They're all a slightly different age, if I'm not mistaken. I will check for you quickly. Um, that's my humming while I look some. Just cleaning out the claws there. Disgusting, really, when you consider what is in those claws. Fairly vulgar. There'll be a lot of extremely, sort of, to us, poisonous bits of flesh riddled with the bacteria that would do nasty things to our intestines. sort of feel the wind, I'm sure. You can kind of feel the cooth. Uh, it's a fairly unpleasant wind blowing out of the southeast, and that does mean, as far as a lion sighting goes, relatively positive things, because if it's not hot, they will kind of move around a bit. I mean, this is an action-packed afternoon sighting. Nighty, well, something that these lions are never ever going to see, no matter how they try, is what Jamie is going to show you now in the Marsi Mara. Look at what we've got over here, and a very good afternoon to all of you, and welcome to the Sunset Safari. Here in the Masai Mara, we have a mysterious looking at Thompson's Gazelle. And I actually want to ask those of you who have perhaps travelled to East Africa before. Whether any of you have ever seen a Thompson's gazelle wallow in mud, or if this poor little female has had a really bad day, because I feel like she's had a bad day and escaped from some predator and gone slipping into the mud. I've never, ever, ever seen one covered in mud like this. Her other side's even worse, and it looks like she might have skidded in and then come out again. And she just intrigued me. I mean, I never see anything like that. I've never seen a Thompson's gazelle covered in mud. And North Clan are all asleep, so I'm basically just circling round and round and round and round until they come out again, or until they wake up again. Hmm. North Clan, for our viewers who have just jumped on this live stream, are a massive clan of hyenas. That's okay, girl. Oh, shame. All right, sweetie. Let me stop. I, do, I get this impression she's had a really bad day. I don't know why. She looks pregnant. Most of the female Thompson's gazelles are either pregnant or they've got little babies now. I don't know. She doesn't look relaxed like she's had a spa day. She's got the ridiculous, in fact, she's a little unicorn Thompson's gazelle. She doesn't even have a second horn. Female Thompson's gazelle are an interesting one when it comes to horns. They, they're ridiculous looking. It's as though... Their genetics is slowly selecting for not having horns at all. I mean, what is that meant to be? That's ridiculous. Most of the time they're deformed looking. They cross sideways or cross into each other. They do use them, and I've seen them fight. Well, all of you have seen them headbutt jackal before or try to, to defend their youngsters, their little lambs. She just... I just think she's gone skidding into the mud for some reason, and I'm curious as to why. Especially in North Can, North Clan country. 
An individual hyena will try and hunt a sleeping Thompson's gazelle if it can. Oh, vast, wide, open, empty spaces. Umka, I don't think she's limping. She doesn't look as though she's limping. Thompson's gazelle have this strange rocking canter that they do when they run. So I don't think that she's limping. She doesn't look injured. Let's just watch her for a little bit in case I've missed something, but I don't think so. I mean, she's happy now, having some dinner. What happened to you, girl? Where's the rest of your family? Well, not your family, your herd. She also looks a little bit lonely. And very alert. I don't think she's had a very good day at all. Right, as thrilling as this has been, let's jump back on board with Tristan in South Africa to go and enjoy some Ellie time. Well, we are still with our Ellie's Jamie. Well, not still with. We came and uh, took over from Sydney and Herbie and Seb because, well, it's always nice to be close to Ellie's in a vehicle. And as, well, as much as it's nice to be on foot, obviously you can't get too close. And it's such a cool sighting because they're on top of us, actually. And it sounds really weird, but if you have a look, directly above us, effectively on the bank, is where the herd is. So it's a very unusual look at an elephant. Generally, we don't get to see them quite in this fashion, in this vein. We can almost see underneath their chins, which is pretty cool. It's a very different experience and not one we get often in this area because of the terrain that we have. We very seldom have these very steep banks and relaxed elephants that will come up right to the edge. I mean, you can see that elephant is on the precipice of that sheer drop and it's seems as though it's taking a bit of a risk in some respects. I'm not sure I would trust that bank as much as that female elephant is. I, I've put a Land Rover close to a bank like that and seen it crumble. And so, you know, an elephant weighs pretty similar and it's, it's taking, I suppose, a bit of a chance. But there's good food down below there. It's some areas there a lot of the other animals can't reach. And so if you're an elephant, I suppose it makes sense to be able to feed up on top there. But very cool angle to kind of see Ellie's. It's not something you get to see every day at all and it's been nice to have them back that's for sure it's been very good to see them deb i'm not sure which tusk you're referring to if it was on that big female it's possible that it's a natural discoloration I'd, and all of them in general you say kirsty okay well no their tusks are normal they're very normal for this area you find sometimes what you'll see with tusks is depending on where elephants spend most of their time will depend on how bright white those tusks appear and so if you find in summer months when it's been raining quite a lot and the elephants have been swimming their tusks often look a lot whiter and a lot cleaner now in the winter months the ellies are very seldom actually getting their tusks very wet and so you're seeing that they kind of get covered with a little bit of dust and a film of dust and they kind of get a little bit more brownish in coloration and not quite as clean but all of these ellies that I've seen here this afternoon seem like they all have pretty clear colored tusks that is normal it's not something that I would expect to be different from elephants is none that have stood out as a major discoloration in terms of their tusks so everything seems quite normal at this stage there's one that's coming out now so I'm just having a look a little bit on the dirty side but not too bad Sometimes if you find the big bulls in the summer months, if there's been a big mud wallow somewhere close by, it's quite fun to actually watch them because they sometimes shove their head, head first into the mud, and you get these two big tusk holes that goes into the mud. And then as they stand up, their, their tusks are just covered in thick brown or, or black mud, and it looks quite odd. So you do see it every now and then in the summer months. In winter, the tusks tend to stay quite dusty, but they do have that more sort of brownish, creamish color than a pure white. Everyone always depicts elephant tusks as pure white and they're not actually. They do have a little bit of staining on them and a bit of dirt that gets rubbed onto them and you can imagine it's it's like if you had to walk around every single day your hands start to get dirty as you handle things and touch things and just settles on them and it's the same with the tusks. Eventually they do get a little bit of staining that takes place so pretty normal coloration for all of them but so cool to like I say to have elephants back in the area again it was a few days where we really kind of struggled with having ellies around we didn't see too many of them and, and it took a while for us to kind of find the herds again but in the last two three days starting to see big herds around and it's always wonderful to have them they're such gentle animals that it's such a privilege to be able to spend time near them now unfortunately most of them have moved off this bank so i'm going to probably reverse myself out of here or turn around and try and find the rest on top of the bank let's just see if i go forward a little bit because that's where it's going to be easier to turn around let's try and just check if i can 
see any more on top. Now, Jenny, I, you both, I think you and many, others and many others could watch elephants all day long. I know some people aren't that fond of spending long periods with elephants. I'm not sure why, though, because Ellie's, for me, are just the most fascinating creatures. There we go. We can see two quite nicely from here, a mom and the little baby. And so, for me, they're just fascinating. And I always enjoy spending time with big groups of Ellie's because there's always something going on. There's cuteness in the, in the younger generation that often is abounding all over the place with ears flaring and them running around and playing and doing their thing. And then you've got the adults that often show very, very, very cool social interaction and you'll see them showing massive amounts of tele intelligence as they try and feed and find different foods in order to fill these massive stomachs and also just the way that they deal with one another is always very interesting and often they take you to water and a mud bath with elephants is got to be one of the most joyous occasions so for me I, I love spending time with Ellie's and I think most of our most of our presenters do so if you think of James and and even Brent and Jamie and pretty much everybody loves to kind of just spend some time with Ellie's and see what they get up to it's a, such a relaxing experience to be in a herd of Ellie's and watch them feed and go about their business oh that female's busy breaking trees left right and center but you can see how cool is that for a view of an Ellie it's not often we get to see kind of underneath as they feed. We might even get lucky if we watch closely. We might even be able to see the teeth inside the mouth. Sometimes at this angle, when they lift their mouth and they open it like that, if she turns a little bit more towards us, you'll actually be able to see in the mouth itself and you'll be able to see these massive teeth that the Ellie's have. It's quite difficult because they're quite recessed, but like I say, at this angle, if she just turns slightly, we may be able to see the white of the teeth. So just look out for them. They're basically big crusher plates. They're quite long and elongated and you'll have one on each side of the mouth a top and bottom so four teeth basically that are viewable and they then act as these big crushes that just break down vegetation very roughly and then send it down into the stomach but it's not something you get to see very often we don't see elephant teeth in their mouth um for, you will see it from time to time but it's only at this angle when you can get underneath them the problem is she's a little far away and she's not quite at the right angle you need them almost facing dead on to you and then you can kind of see inside the mouth a little bit better but still very cool you can see they've stripped that knob thorn as well which is not ideal Also, so yes, there is differences between the trunk in Asian and African elephants, and it f is on the end of the trunk. So you'll see with this trunk that this female has got two little fingers on the end. Do you see that? So one on the bottom, one on the top. It's almost like a triangular tip to the top and bottom of that trunk. Whereas in Asia, the elephants there, they don't have the bottom little triangle. So they've only got one little finger on their trunk. It's referred to as a finger, basically. And so it's not like our fingers and not a digit but it is just referred to that because of the way it moves but they've only got one whereas ours have got two and the trunks here in Africa they tend to be a little bit bigger due to the fact that the African elephants are slightly bigger but other than that very very similar this muscle structures and the way that the trunk works and operates is pretty much the same between the two species it's just that ending is slightly different between the Asian and the African elephants look at that hello little one You've mastered the art of your trunk already. You notice now that one doesn't have tusks yet. It is quite a big elephant not to have tusks. I would have expected to see tusks already on that individual. It does look like... I'm just trying to see if there's any sign of growth under the lip because you can see where they come out. It's just below the eye there. It's now here hiding it a little bit. But you see there now it doesn't actually look like she's got any tusks coming out. So I wonder if this is going to be one of the tuskless females that we often do see in the greater Kruger system. It's quite common these days to actually see elephants without tusks and she's old enough to not to, uh, well, to have already produced tusks so I think that she's not going to get through her life. Now it won't hinder her too much and especially in the females they don't have to worry as much because they don't have to use them to fight and establish dominance. But there they go disappearing off into the thicket so we're going to turn around and try to catch up with them. Jack, baby elephants to grow into teenagehoods, well, very similar to us as humans. So we will basically 
go into puberty depending on male or female and, and yeah, normally it's in our early teens and it's the same with elephants so you'll find male elephants are kicked out of the herd roughly between 12 and 16 years of age that's normally when they're evicted as they basically go into puberty and become a handful and moms and grandmothers and aunts chase them out the females will be able to start breeding at 12 years old so that's when they start mating with males um, it's some of them will be 13 14 years but it's generally around 12 that they start it's quite interesting here it's it's a nice sort of track exercise because you won't see this very often you see this is a very steep bank that's coming down from this termite mound into this riverbed but if you actually look you can see where the elephants use their knees to slide down so there's some slide marks there and then the actual footprints at the bottom but if we just go back up a little bit since there we go you see the knee slide that is coming down that little area that's smooth just to the right of that grassy patch that's where they've slid on their knees as they've come down and their back legs have been folded up and then they'll kind of use their front legs just to hold their weight and slide their way down the bank so it's a very cool slide mark from Ellie's it's not something you see that often this is quite a steep bank and Ellie's generally won't go up or down banks this heavy but or this steep should I say but either today there was a young one that decided that this is where it wanted to go very 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 cool good well we're going to try like I say find a better view of our Ellie's on top of the banks we just need to do a bit of work to get around there and so while we do that let's send you across to Scotty Dyson up in the Mara with some sleepy cats good luck Tristan I hope you get the view you are hoping to find as you can see we have found a lioness and this is one of the sausage tree lioness one of the four that we've been seeing recently we're not too sure where the fifth one is and there is a big male lion and we don't know who this male lion is so I'm hoping that possibly some of you guys who are experts at identifying lion and that follow the lives of the different lions in the Maasai Mara and the Sabi Sands closely may be able to help us. Um, what I'll do is I'll show you in a couple of minutes on a map exactly where we are but we're basically in the southwestern corner of the Mara Triangle so my guess would be that this could be one of the males from the Oldonio Paek Pride also known as the Cobra Crossing Pride, the Cobra Corner Pride as well as the Ingiruare Pride. Four names, one pride. Take your pick. And that's who I think it may be, but that's just a kind of wild guess. It could be anyone, really. I'm not too confident. I know one of those big males does have kind of a dreadlock. Ooh, are we going to get lucky? Now, I don't think I've mentioned that these guys are mating. So I should have said that long ago. And <laughs> what she may well do is get up and try and seduce him into mating with her now we were in this area yesterday morning oh, nice big yawn i think she is going to get up so get ready for business get ready for some screenshots here goes now they only started yesterday listen carefully Wow, not the most convincing mating I've ever seen. Also, this guy's got quite a weird mane. It looks like he's been to a barber recently that did a terrible job. It's kind of that section at the backs. What is that? Does he have a big... He does have a big dreadlock back there. Quite a scruffy old guy. Now, the dreadlock I was talking about, the one earlier, comes down from the center of its mane, and I actually completely forgot that I do need to send you guys away to Jamie, who has got, hopefully, still some hyena making some funny noises. <laughs> we sorry, I know you've been watching the the scene with the lions. It's obviously very serious, <laughs> but we're sitting we're sitting with Jude and Mzimu, and he, he's trying to suckle, but Mom has laid down in the worst possible place because it's right on this erosion gully leading into a massive river system, and poor the poor thing. <laughs> He keeps falling down while he's trying to suckle because he's just not small enough. 
<laughs> Manu and I have been in absolute hysterics because he he was just it was very elegant it was just this the, his bottom leading sort of going 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 gone and then he lay on his back briefly in that hollow there and then got up and whined about it and then tried again he still can't get comfortable oh, oh, oh squeeze up closer to mum that was very inconsiderate of her was it not <laughs> oh his face it was so priceless I was half asleep and, and just very disoriented. What just happened to me? If you're wondering why I don't make more Hey Jude jokes, it's because I think Manu might actually die if I make any more Hey Jude jokes. I think I've done it every day for the last four months. I've done that joke to death, unfortunately. Killed it before we even went live. But her full name is indeed Hey Jude. Naturally... As soon as I see her, I start singing na na na's in my head. Oh, oh, Zemo, you gonna do it again? You gonna do it again? Oh, oh. <laughs> Momentum. Oh, oh, can't get comfortable. Oh, Mum, what have you done to him? Have you forgotten that he's not tiny, cuddly, and tuck awayable? Not sure that is a. An adjective, but we'll go with it. Tuck awayable. <laughs> oh, it was so funny. He just kind of slid off with his his the tip of his lips and his tongue the last thing to disengage from mum as he slid down. <laughs> I think he's gonna do it again. He is, because he he's too big. His legs don't fold comfortably up against her chest. Okay, I'm going to try and get this right. Toothy tooth or poofy poof or toothy poof? Help. <laughs> That's a very valid question, but unfortunately I've been derailed completely by hearing the latter says cursed. Which one was the latter? Toothy poof. Toothy poof. Um, moving rapidly onwards, how long do hyenas suckle for? And the answer to that is actually a very extended lactation period. So while lion cubs will wean at around about six months of age, um, they might suckle for a bit longer, hyenas can go up to a year and a half, sometimes even two. So they suckle for an extended period of time. It's one of those discussions around why female hyenas have such high levels of male hormones within their bodies, um, why they're structured the way that they are. And one of the one of the theories is that it allows them to lactate for quite an extended period of time and therefore provide their cubs with an enormous amount of nutrients, which is essential because the actual bone crushing power of their jaws is an incredibly complex process, and the muscles around the face up to the the sagittal crest on the top of the head those things all have to develop to allow that hyena crushing power, and that only really happens at around two years old. So although they could give you a really solid bite at this age, not the same as Jude would be able to deliver. She really couldn't care less about how uncomfortable her cub is. It's hysterical. And despite the fact it can't be that comfortable for her either because he's pushing against her to try and move her up. And he just he can't quite. Oh dear boy. Not ideal, huh? Is that better? It's going to happen again. I can guarantee it. Trish, you say it's taking a long time to suckle. They do. They, they'll lie and suckle like this for up to an hour. Sometimes even more. So they do. They, they pretty much suckle for... Oh, wait. Are we talking about lactation periods or, or Mzimu's actual suckling process? Either way, yes. It's a long process. They have one of the most nutrient-rich milk, milks of milks. They're the most nutrient-rich milk when compared to most other animals out here. So they really do provide their cubs with the best possible start in life. Minus, you know, the part where poor Mzimu can't get comfortable because he's just going to fall down into a hole. <laughs> oh, Manu and I were giggling. <laughs> 
I'm, I'm actually surprised he didn't fall all the way down into that. Can you imagine if he had? I was looking through a lot of old footage of when these cubs were small so that I could identify, go back and, and re relabel the footage with who is who and look for any critical moments within the, the clan hierarchy. And I found a lot of moments of hyena cubs falling down. They're very sweet, very uncoordinated. Yeah. So while we sit it out with Zimu and Jude, since it's our best place to start for the evening, let's go and rejoin Tristan and his herd of elephants. Well, from one social animal to another, so it's probably two of the most complicated social structures that we get out here in the form of hyenas and elephants, and so really nice to have both of them featuring this afternoon. I'm sure many of you are very happy to have both of those species around, but this herd is a beautiful herd. It's big, it's lots of little babies in the grouping. There's some funny little ones that have been running around all over the show in this cooler weather. Sometimes you see that they will do that. You can see this one is having a little bit of an afternoon tea. So it's having some milk. Hello, little one. I always love watching Ellie's drink. The way that they curl their trunk up over their heads, there we go. So it's now just curled up and then that allows them to be able to suckle from their mom. Mom looks completely relaxed by all of this. Very, very cool. Nice work there, Senzo. So Senzo's got us a beautiful view of that trunk kind of curled up and this little one having an afternoon drink. And the fact that the female is so, so relaxed with us being as close as we are and allowing the little baby to suckle while we're here is just a testament to how Relax this herd actually is now. There's another little baby on our right hand side that is about as cute as could be a very very small little one. I imagine it's only probably about five six months old and you can see it's scratching itself on the branch. It's been biting things. It's been charging around a little bit but it is very very sweet. There we go leaning on the branch a little bit. Now with mom moving I'm pretty sure it's going to move as well. Careful little one you're going to not want to get squashed by mom because as you can see mom is a lot larger than that tiny little baby and so it's still working things out and when they're so small like that they often are very very curious and they'll walk around and they'll sniff and they'll touch and they'll try and kind of investigate absolutely everything you can see now it's picked up a branch so it's learning how to use its trunk a little bit so it's watching mom and then from there it works out how it actually needs to feed and so it uses its trunk in all different ways and eventually it will be able to feed just like its mom does there we go has to walk quite fast to keep up with mom as well. Their little steps are not quite the same as mom's. But so cool to be with a big group of Ellie's again. I've missed them quite a lot. Now I'm going to just creep forward once more because it will be nice just to see the rest of them. It's a little bit more open in front here. And so we should get a really nice view of quite a number of the small Ellie's that are on the side. There's quite a few of them that are having a little game and moving around quite a bit. And they're nice and relaxed this afternoon. So We'll just try and kind of get into this little open section and be able to see them nicely. So let's see, now this one's also having a little drink. You know, mom's decided she needs to move before this little one can drink, but there we go. Very cute. You can see how you can use size as an indicator of how old a baby is. I was saying six months, might be a little older than that, maybe closer to a year. At that size, they can still fit underneath mom. So it will pass between mom's front legs and underneath, and it will use mom for shade, funny enough. So those ears are still very sensitive to the sun. And today is obviously a day that we don't need to worry about the sun too much. But as it gets hotter and we start moving towards summer months, so mom's shade is going to be vitally important. And you'll find that that little one will need to go under. Now I'm pretty sure if mom doesn't stop we're going to hear a squeal from that little baby because it wants to suckle. Mom is just walking too fast for it to actually get close enough although now I see that they've stopped and the little one can get a bit of a drink and it's doing it with style. You see it's even got the cross-legged So, Jack, the wrinkly skin for elephants is all part of increasing the surface area in order to keep them cooler in the summer months. So it just helps with the more increased skin area, the more 
they don't have to worry about heat and so that's why it's quite wrinkled like that it's also obviously a very very thick skin and it helps just to protect their body a little bit when they're walking through these thorny savannas and the wrinkles are going to be part of that if it was a very tight skin and thin skin you wouldn't get those wrinkles but they would also get a problem or oh, there's two that are going to play in that they would get themselves quite injured if you look at their ears their ears are often quite tatty and that's the difference between the thinner skin over the ears and the thicker skin on the body so but mostly it's the increased surface area that helps just with keep maintaining body temperature more than anything else now this little one at the back is the naughtiest of this group it keeps running around headbutting everybody and you can see it's got a little attitude doesn't it i wonder if it's going to headbutt this other older one again it's not scared as well it runs around going after the bigger ones smaller ones doesn't really matter it's been quite full of nonsense this afternoon which has been quite nice now what i want to do is just quickly shoot around because the road actually where they're walking they're going to come right out onto the road again so we should be able to get them from front on which will be very pleasant and so we can see their faces and not just their bottoms right now while i quickly get into a better position and wait for them to expose themselves on the road a little bit better we're going to send you across to jamie to see what's behind us Oh, we've had two cute suckling moments, but the saga continues with poor Mzimu, whose mother could just roll over and, you know, let him suckle on some nice flat ground, but she really just couldn't care less. <laughs> he's already slid down again. Now he's popped his bottom back up. But, you see, the thing is, is that when he's suckling like this, he almost, he'll fall asleep um, while he's suckling. Just, just as human babies will do so he'll just pass out and that's when the problem comes in because now while he's awake and actively suckling he, he can control the, the descent but when he falls asleep then he tumbles and he can't quite I, I know if we were to go around him we would see him desperately trying to keep his eyes open which he can't really do the only thing I can tell him is that he's lucky he doesn't have a sibling because otherwise they'd have real trouble in this position. And it's not as though Jude doesn't know that, that he's uncomfortable, because she must feel him wriggling around. He's oh, 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 big enough and old enough, though. Look how his back's twisted. He's trying to compensate by putting his bottom straight up. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, now we're going to try stretch out the back leg all right while Mzimu gets comfortable quicker back across to Tristan with a very cute baby elephant well it's a cuteness competition between Mara hyena on the bank and Ellie babies and this is what I was hoping for is to come around this side and get these two basically fooling around and they've come out exactly where I hoped they had had would have come out and lots of games being played so at the back is the boisterous one I was talking about earlier and in front is the tiny little one that was with mom suckling just now so it's been brave enough that it's come out and it's being very brave because it's all on its own yes you are very brave look at you yes now you're going to kick dust at me but it's all on its own there's no adult anywhere nearby at the moment you can see its toenails are actually still pink in front of the car that's quite cool because you don't often see them as pink as that <laughs> what are you doing? Yes, you're a big elephant. I'm very intimidated by you. Now there's backup in the background there. You can see also ears of... <laughs> Isn't this just the cutest thing? <laughs> what has the tree done to you? Hmm? I love when... I love when they babies like this because almost... <laughs> So they got a tree just got head butted and they're <laughs> it's all a lot of show but not really much is actually happening now they're going to take it out on each other and the game is going to continue off into the thickets there they go running how cute is this <laughs> what are you two up to yes i can see that you both big elephants and that <laughs> is this not amazing very cheeky and like I said, now they're pushing each other, running around. <laughs> I, 
I have no idea what is going on all of a sudden, but the crazies seem to have gotten into these two young elephants. And I'm sure a lot of you are enjoying this just as much as I am because it's just chaos for two elephants. The rest of the herd is completely uh, unperturbed by anything, and none of them are even paying attention. But these two little Ellies have gotten uh, the kid crazies, and they are running around like absolute hooligans. Now, I think we're in for round two. Yes, there we go. It's quite funny when they run and try and headbutt each other, but miss each other all together. That's my favorite. Now let's see if they come back again. <laughs> How cute is that? Now, our repositioning has worked absolutely perfectly because they've popped out exactly where I wanted them to. Now, they're coming back to where mom is, but I'm not sure this is finished. There's a nice little open section that I'm hoping they're going to come back into. Well, that one's being pushed through the thickets again. Carla say your heart is swelling. Well, I think you and many others look at that. What are you two up to? Yeah, naughty is what these two are, particularly the one, the bigger of the two, is the naughty one. They're charging around all over the place. And I was saying earlier it was being boisterous, and well, now it's really the game kind of heated up, and the little one got involved too. And it's not finished yet. You can see now backing up, when their tail is erect like that and their ears are out, that's when they're still in full game mode. Now we're being charged. What are you doing, little one? <laughs> yes, well done. You're proving a point. I can see that you're going to be very big and you're very intimidating already at this age. Now, it wouldn't be so nice if this was an adult elephant doing this, so it would be a lot less cute. But when they're small, it's very, very entertaining watching them go about their games. And what's interesting with this is that it's it's important and imperative behavior as much as it's cute is that we don't back down and we don't move around because if we did that from a young age we would be starting to teach them a very bad habit now i'm not sure if either one of them are boys look at this is this just not the coolest thing this has got to be one of the best ellie playing sessions i've seen in a very long time So, Bob, you say cuteness overload. Yes, this is as cute and as much cuteness as possibly any of us can handle. It really is very cool. <laughs> uh, like I said, it's not stopping either. They're just still busy with it. And I'm hoping that they're going to come back into this open clearing. They came quite close earlier. Look at that little side eye. Yes, we see that you're watching us. Now they're watching each other once again. <laughs> I love how they build up for the run up as well. They kind of back up a few steps and then it's a full charge. Here we go, yeah, they're coming. <laughs> Look at the ears, how they're flapping as they go. This is amazing. If this doesn't put you in a good mood, well, then I don't know. Then you've got a problem and you might need medication in order to sort yourself out because this is the best mood lifter I've had in a long, long time. <laughs> oh no, we've got a fall now as well. This is amazing. You two are full of beans this afternoon. So, James, you say such big personalities for such tiny individuals. Yes, lots of personality exuding from these two. And I'm sure the weather conditions have a part and parcel of why we're seeing this. It also amazes me how mom just sits to the right here and is absolutely non sort of phased by the ongoings of these two around her. So she's just sitting there kind of feeding. Yes, well, the children are out of control. Maybe it's been a tough day for her and she's just, you know, when she got, to, they've reached her limit and she's just, well, they must just play it out and exude energy. <laughs> yes, well done. That was a good charge. My favorite is when they turn too fast and they overturn and then they almost fall over. That's when I absolutely love it. And you can see poor quarry bushes are being squashed and kicked and now Drongo is being chased. <laughs> it's like a series of calculated falls that is taking place at this stage. What are you up to? You're going to sleep well later with lots of energy being burnt at this stage. Uh, here comes the other one, back into the game. After a moment's rest by mom, it's now full game and fast forward once again. 
this, like I say, has got to be one of my best Ellie playing sightings I've had in years. Normally you see it around water where they get the crazies and they just run up and down all over the place, but these two this afternoon are going absolutely mental and they are doing all kinds of things. <laughs> Very cool. And the drongos are in amongst it as well because the drongos can't be out of the action too. They've got to be in amongst everything and making sure they are in the thick of it and just finding food. I suppose there's lots of insects being disturbed by this nonsense that's going on here and they are reaping the rewards from playful ellies. Now it's too good for us not to share this with everybody on all our different platforms so I'm just going to stop speaking for a little bit and hope that we can get a little bit more of these playful ellies. Well, good afternoon everybody and welcome to little baby Ellie's that are having the best afternoon ever. They are playing and are in full hyperactive mode. As you can see, lots of charging and carrying on. They're chasing each other all over the place. Mom is completely unfazed. She's sitting just off to the right and really isn't too worried about what's going on. But it's been absolute chaos. Now, we are coming to you live from South Africa, which means that we would love to hear from all of you. My name is Tristan and on camera I've got Senzo and I say that I'd love to hear from you and you can do that by just posting any of your questions or comments in the comment sections below and we'll try to get through as many as possible but as I was saying these two have been at it for about a good 10 minutes already they've been playing the, the one at the back the bigger of the two has been in hyperactive mode for a little bit longer than that and has been running around like a bit of a hooligan and is now roped in its younger friend and you can see lots of charging ears are out they are having a really good game now this is all of a show that they've seen mom <laughs> mom do before in order to intimidate and to chase off potential predators. Now when they're young like this they tend to over dramatize everything as I'm sure a lot of mothers can attest to and they are doing the exact same thing and they're trying to basically impress us and intimidate us by charging at us and trying to make sure that we feel intimidated. Yes you are very intimidating and that head shake is very good and you can see then they once it doesn't work on us then it goes to the others. Now Lynn you say what gorgeous creatures they are are incredible now look at the strength of mom as much as they're cute watch mom just move this entire thorn tree how amazing is that so she's moved that so that she can expose the grass to feed off it where other animals can't which is an incredible display of power now the tree she just moved you wouldn't want to touch because that would just strip your hands of skin got very nasty thorns on it so just goes to show how tough these animals are and how strong they can be now we were saying earlier that they are amazing animals and elephants have got to evoke some of the most deepest connections and emotions in us as people because they seem to have this family bond much like what we do and well they're very intelligent and so there's a lot of things that we can relate to and that's why we get very very connected with Ellie's and these two this afternoon have been an absolute pleasure there they go running off again the game is not finished we're going to now go into the thicker stuff I think mom for the older one is now coming up as well now Erin how much these babies would weigh the, uh, the bigger of the two probably is weighing I would say around 400 pounds maybe even more 500 pounds they grow quite quickly and the smaller of the two is probably closer to about 300 350 pounds I mean it's a rough estimate it could be completely wrong of course and could be a little bit heavier than that they are the youngest one is probably about a year old and, and the bigger of the two is probably I would say roughly in the region of about two years old so they've grown a little bit since their birth weight when they're born they weigh in at about 250 to 300 pounds depending on the size now the boisterous of the two has gone behind us the little one here is still around let's see if it comes and continues the game it's very cute this little baby Ellie Pretty parents can be very protective. In fact, elephants are some of the most protective mothers in nature. They will make sure that their babies are always looked after. But you'll see that we're right in the middle of the herd at the moment. So this little baby is no more than 
five meters from us and that's because in this area there is very little elephant poaching or any sign of elephants being hurt by humans and they've learned that we are not a threat to them so we're not something that feeds them we don't threaten them and that's why we can get quite close and in amongst them and mom doesn't mind if mom was stressed out by her baby being close to us one she wouldn't allow this baby to get anywhere near where it is right now I mean you can see this baby is right here coming up to say hello hello little one this is such a privilege to be this close to an Ellie little baby. It's very, very cool. But this little one, is she wouldn't allow it to get this close. And secondly, if she did allow this one to get close like this and she was stressed, she would have found that she would have stopped feeding immediately. Her ears would have gone out. She would have grabbed the baby with her trunk, pulled her baby very, very close. And then she would have trumpeted and really given us a lot of a hard time and she would try to push us away. So she's very comfortable with us. She knows that we're not a threat to her little one. And this is one of the best things about being out on safari is that if you, in any areas like this you can get these magical magical sightings and it just shows how animals if you give them a bit of respect and space and don't hurt them they're actually quite trusting and you can get some really intimate and amazing sightings now look at this little one you see how it's trying to use its trunk it's still too young to use its trunk properly and to be able to feed itself and so it suckles from mom but it's watching mom use its trunk and it's trying to figure out how does this work so it's got its little trunk wrapping around small little leaflets but you can see it doesn't quite have the technique down oh shame little one are you still learning oopsie we lost it oh no no you didn't get it <laughs> it's trying though and eventually it will get it right there we go well done you just picked a branch excellent work so even though it's suckling it's learning every day how to feed itself and eventually it will be able to do it with no problem whatsoever and be much like mom and have this super dexterous trunk and it's able to move around and get all the food it needs but the very very cute so Jean, if it's a female, it will stay with its mom pretty much for the rest of its life. They will be part of the herd and they will join together. But if it's a little male, unfortunately it's going to be pushed out at around about 12 to 15 years old. Look at it run. That is so cool. Hey guys, how privileged are we? This is amazing. So they're just going to cross the road in front of us and move off we've been super super fortunate now the two of them that were causing the trouble earlier are about to reconnect so you can see look there they go running off towards one another and i wonder if the game is going to carry on now the one on the left is about to go to the toilet by the looks of things i saw the tail lifting slightly which is generally a sign that toilet time is coming so maybe that's why there's a little bit of a hold in the games for now because one needs to go to the toilet but very very cool to see and, and like i say you can see mom is completely relaxed she's not even turned her back to us she's not in any Anyway, worried that we are right in amongst her herd which is a very special thing we're being treated to probably one of my better elephant sightings that I've had in many many years it's been seriously special and you can see a little one just ambling off now as if mom walks down the road as well very cute and you can see also it's still not quite as steady on its feet as maybe some of the others but that was absolutely amazing what an epic treat that we had this afternoon and it was a privilege to have all of you join us for it and i hope that you enjoyed it so from myself and senzo it's been really really nice to have you with us hopefully you'll join us on safari live and we'll see you all very very soon Well, wasn't that just absolutely spectacular? Seriously, amazing. That was very, very, very cool. And I hope that you all enjoyed it just as much as Senzo and I, because even though I was loving every minute of it and I was giggling, Senzo behind me was all smiles and also laughing as well. So very, very cool. Now, while I carry on with our Ellie's and move down towards the pan, let's send you across to James Henry, who I believe has got, well, a spotted surprise. A spotted surprise. Yes, there he is, Hosanna. It is with some joy that I say that we found Hosanna, or we are with Hosanna. It is with some sense of shame that I say we are with Hosanna. This is because we drove past what he is killed sometime yesterday, and whether or not he had it in the tree when we drove past here this morning, I don't know. But there's a kill in the tree over there. It is an impala. 
but he's been on that for at least a day, I'd say. And unfortunately, I drove past it this morning if it was in the tree. It may not have been in the tree. I know that I didn't look in the tree though. Now, I think we're going to have to move a little bit here because we're going to be in the way. I just want to check that Aubrey can see. Mingavon. Sure. Yes, they say it's fine, they can see. That's a relief. And so he's fast asleep, or now, or he's about to be fast asleep, I'm pretty sure. And this, I can remember seeing him in this very tree with his sister. His mum was just below. Probably about, I'd say about, 18 months ago or so, he's probably about six months old. It wouldn't have been 18 months ago, it been almost two years ago. Two years ago it must have been. I've got a picture of him in this very tree where the kill is. The tree was in full leaf and he was just on one exposed branch. And it was a lovely kind of juxtaposition of the green and his lovely colours. Well, H. Macy, that may not be a situation that persists for very long. You say no one's stolen it from him. Now, Tingana's tracks are nowhere around here, but Tingana does have a very uh, good nose, and he might pop along here and steal it off his son fairly soon, but that doesn't really matter. Horsana has had a good feed. You can see he's got a big fat belly, and he's now very relaxed and very sleepy. Marvellous. Very pleasant indeed to be with this leopard. So at least now as we lead up to TV shows on Friday, on Saturday morning, or Friday evening for many of you in the in America, where it is of course the only place you can watch it in the northern US, um, at least we know where one of our leopard characters is now. The trick is going to be to find the other three, Tandi and Tlalamba, and of course Mr. Tingana. We very much want to introduce him to you. Well, of course, most, all of you know him, but we very much want to introduce him to our TV audience. We've failed to do that thus far. In fact, we haven't introduced Tandi and Tlalamba either, have we? The first two episodes we had Hosanna and the Lions, and then last week we had Hyenas, Wild Dogs, and this fellow. No, Magic Dragon Wizard, you're absolutely correct. He's going to do absolutely nothing with that full tummy and that kill. The only thing he might do, of course, is try and avoid having it stolen. Big fat belly. You can hear people laughing and enjoying in the background. They are, of course, tourists. Seems like a two trucks f trucks full of children. Toofy Toof, the answer to that question is more often than he'd like to. Uh, he is constantly killing and having his food stolen. Toofy Toop, with a P. Toofy Toop, what a very strange name you have. Poof. Poofy Poof. Poofy Poop. Poofy Poop. Somebody called themselves Poofy Poop. Poofy Poof or Poofy Poop. I don't know what your name is. It's created great consternation in the final control now. Poofy Poof. Okay, good, right. It's, I still think that's a rather odd name, regardless of whether it's Poofy Poop or Poofy Poof. Anyway... The answer is that he kills more often than he'd like to, and that's because he keeps getting his kills stolen by his father. And in one case, his sister and sister-niece, or, yes, sister-niece tucked in. There, you see, he's keeping an eye out because he's weary of the great thievery that could take place here. Um, so, poofy poof, poofy poof. He'd probably kill once every three or four days. 
if what he was eating was something like this impala, maybe even five days or so. But of course we don't know if he's eating scrub hairs on the way or the odd Franklin or mongoose or chin spot batters for that matter. He certainly eats terrapins from time to time. So it really does depend on what he kills and how hungry he's feeling and whether or not he be, is able to kill or whether he's able to finish his kill before it is stolen. That would of course be very nice to see him go up there and do some actual eating, but in the size of his belly I'm not sure that's going to happen any time soon. Someone will go back to the lions at some stage today, probably closer to the end of drive. I may well go back. So those of you who are missing the Nkohoma pride, and don't worry, we will go back there, one of us, before the end of the drive. They were just sitting there doing nothing at all. And so we left them. Right, well, one of the things, of course, that Osanimus watch out for is a hyena, and Jamie has got a whole clan of those for you now. Well, I think at this age, this hyena wouldn't be too much of a threat to Hosanna just yet. Look how beautiful the shot is. This cub's just wandered up across to us and lay down right next to us. I mean, right next to us. And made the sweetest little sort of baby sounds as it lay down. Sort of... So cute. I think we're having a cute afternoon, which is nice. It's nice to have one of those every now and again. Baby elephants playing everywhere. Look at this. Little fluff ball. It's fast asleep. I like that about them. I mean, they are completely wild. We'll just enjoy the fact that they're so comfortable with us. Okay, we're going to enjoy our tender moment with a hyena cub. Let's go and join Taylor, who has found a very large bird. Look at how epic this is. We haven't had much luck with the cats today, but we've been blessed with some birds. And these are called black and white casked hornbills. How awesome is that? Now, the male is the one on the left, and the female is the one on the right. And the, the reason I can tell the difference is purely just by looking at the cask. And it's very much the same with the other hornbill species. Is the beak is not as well, that whole cask is not as well developed with the females. It's sort of... I suppose less intrusive. How cool is that? That was very sweet. Now, just a moment ago, the male actually bopped down the tree and grabbed something. I don't know what it was. I couldn't quite see. The light is obviously not so great this afternoon. And then he fed it to his mate, which was very sweet to see. And they all snuggled up on this chilly afternoon here in the Mara. But they eat lots of different things. I, I, I mean, I haven't spent too much time with them. But I imagine they'd have a very similar diet to that of a crowned hornbill where they eat lots and lots of fruit. So out here they can eat lots of figs. There's plenty of fig trees, probably fruit from some of the diaspires trees and, and lots of other things. And maybe even, I don't know, a few small mammals too. But that's not the only birds that we've got out at the moment. There's some bee eaters. You can maybe hear them. There's actually one just sitting perfectly for us. Hello, little bee eater. It's not a little bee eater again. It's just small. It's a white-fronted bee eater. Isn't that beautiful? And there are lots of them. There's so many of them around at the moment. And they're making lots and lots and lots of lots of noise, which is quite cool. Which is really nice. But I'm just so sad that we haven't found any lions yet. But I was so excited. I hit the brakes like you cannot even believe. <laughs> when, I, when I saw those hornbills. Okay, there we go. Deborah, it's a new bird for you. Not yeah, maybe, maybe the bee eaters also a new bird, but the hornbills is most certainly a, a new bird for you. And they're quite gregarious. You, you notice that with a lot of the bee eater species, they're not they're not afraid to socialise uh, with one another. And I'm still waiting to get an entire line of bee eaters all on the same sort of perch. I'm trying to open my book so I can try and show you some of the other bee eater species. Let me quickly look for the bee eaters. Page 280. I should remember this. I should remember this. Where is 
white fronted. I make the coolest sounds. I'm gonna stand up quickly. Sorry, I've been down below. Have I just dismantled my earpiece? Yes, I have. Now I can't hear anything that Kirsten is going to say to me. Stand by, please. I don't know if I can reattach this live because it's got to go underneath my shirt. <laughs> so I'm just going to talk to you and Archie can tell me when Kirsten wants me to send you a way. I'll fix that in a minute. So the white fronted bee eater is number two. This is the one that we're looking at over here. How's that Archie the distance away? Is that okay? Let me see we're in a different setup. So that's the one that we have been looking at. But there's some beautiful, beautiful, beautiful species. Another one that we will also soon see is down here, the bottom right is the European bee eater. So we'll keep an eye out for them because they should be arriving soon. Now from about August, if I'm not mistaken, which is very cool. Right, I'm going to now fix my earpiece, which you all cannot watch, but off we go back to Jamie. Very cool. So while Taylor fixes her earpiece, we're still enjoying the company of the fluff ball next to us. Peacefully breathing. <laughs> awesome. How thick and fluffy is that coat? That's a way of keeping warm in the cold Mara wind. It does make IDing them very difficult though. I've got no idea who this is. Not a clue. Beenamoo! Of course, little baby hyenas are born black and fuzzy, and then they slowly transition to get their spots. You want to know when that happens. It's a nice example just to show you how close this cub is. And then we've got Essio. I think that's BFG lying next to us, and I think this is Essio coming along to join. Oh, no, actually. Yes, is a bit younger than the one lying next to us, that's so not BFG. So, hyena covers will get their spots at around about two and a half, three months. You start to see the black fading and the spots start to appear on the shoulder. And of course, these are completely 100% unique to each individual. They have a specific spot pattern and that will come through at around three months of age. It does change slightly in the sense that as they get bigger, the spots spread out and they go through this incredibly fluffy stage where it's difficult to see their spot pattern at all. But each and every one is unique. And they do look as though they inherit the sort of type of spots and layout of the spots from their mothers. They just, I don't know, it's, it's quite clear to me with some hyenas that they're related to each other. Some have deep, bold spots, some have smudges, some have little dots. Where did Essio go? He ducked down into the slugger. I haven't seen him pop out. They definitely get easier to, or clearer, after about their first year or so. Once they've finished with this fluffy stage. You can just imagine how sticky that fur is. Are you absolutely fast asleep right next to us? So it's such a moment to treasure because the adults don't do this. Okay, sleepy cub. You'd better get all your rest in now because the wildebeest are coming. They haven't reached North Clan's territory yet, but they have reached the area where Scott is. It certainly is very wonderful the, all the time that Jamie is spending with those hyena and I can definitely say I'm quite envious of those cute little cubs that she gets to see so close to her car. As you can see, we have got a beautiful view overlooking a massive herd of wildebeest. I guess there's a few zebra dotted in and amongst them. And we perched ourselves up on this kind of lookout point in the hope that we would be able to find any sign of the Owino pride. Now we did bump into somebody that did see them this morning at about 6 a.m. They had just finished off two wildebeest kills and those wildebeest kills were off to our right. So Jandre is gonna show you guys kind of the direction where the kill was made. You can see that beautiful massive fig tree in the center of your screen. Basically 
in the foreground in the big open kind of grassy field you can actually see a road that bisects it they were just on the other side of that road somewhere over there where the kill was and then they made their way towards us we are told so they could be somewhere in and around where you can see a camp has been built now and that's one of the temporary campsites called Camp Yamungu which means God's camp and it's called God's camp I guess because the person, well I'm told the person who first found it when it was recently kind of mark, uh, marked out as a campsite said this place was fit for God so it's a very beautiful spot and the problem is is because that camp is there we can't drive around there and look for the lions so it leaves us in a spot of bother um, so we're kind of just sitting here hoping that they may pop out but the fact that they did have two wildebeest for breakfast and who knows what they had before that during the night they may well be fast asleep but we kind of just thought we'd spend some time here but I think tomorrow morning I'm gonna come back here at the crack of dawn and oh sorry Jandre um, and Jandre just coughed that's why I said sorry if some of you are wondering what happened while the camera just shuddered um, so yeah we kind of probably gonna come back here first thing in the morning and have, an, have another look hopefully they would have come out by then interestingly also not far from here at all is where the sausage tree pride uh, at least four of them were hanging out they followed this kind of lugger that you can see over there and they probably kind of somewhere where we're looking right now at least the one lioness the other three lioness uh, in that pride are unaccounted for now so we're gonna head back down there and kind of this road kind of winds us along the eastern side of the slugger. And if we don't have any luck with the other sausage tree females, then we plan on heading to go and look for the big males of that pride, Kipuli, and the two two younger males. Those are our plans for now. We haven't seen the boys for a while, and it'll be very nice to know maybe if they can close if they came across one of the females mating with the other kind of not so big male it would make for an epic showdown so who knows maybe we'll get some intelligence as to what the boys are up to oh uh, let's have a look here as well because they are right here i guess and it's quite a beautiful scene before we head off there are all these wildebeest just chilling right next to us over here and interestingly they don't always make that uh, 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 noise um at the moment you can see they silence even though there's quite a few of them they're enjoying the delicious red oat grass well I mean I'm told it's delicious I don't think it's delicious myself not to my palate but they're enjoying it and this is just the beginning so these are the kind of front runners of the the herds and I'm looking forward to more and more of these beasts to come in and eat as much of this grass as possible which will definitely make our lives a little bit easier now I have been having some trouble hearing Kirsty. She has been whispering your questions to me, but I have not been able to hear any of them sadly. But I think now that I am going to be sending you across to James and Hosanna. Forgive me if that is not where you end up. Well, here you have ended up, so there is no forgiveness required. Hosanna has not moved. Uh, he is twitching his back foot there. Looks like his back left foot he's giving a little bit of a twitch too. Yes, well done. No, he stopped doing that now even as well. We have heard a little bit of alarm calling from some birds and wondered if perhaps Tingana wasn't about to arrive to steal his son's meal. So far no other leopard has pitched up and leapt into this tree. I would think it unlikely that he'll pitch up with this wind You'd have to be standing pretty much dead in front of it because it's quite a strong breeze. And I imagine that unless he was sort of standing pretty close by, I think he'll probably just waft off. Well, Sammy, age five, thank you for talking to us. Horsana's birthday is on the 2nd of February. So he will be three on the 2nd of February 2019. I think it was the 2nd of February, yes, it was the 2nd of February. Look how tired he is. He's such a sleepy kitty. 
Tell me, what do you want to give him for his birthday? I wonder what we should give him for his birthday, Sammy. I think that we should give him... Obviously, we'll give him a cake, because all leopards like to eat cake from time to time. It might have to be a mince cake, though. It won't be a chocolate or vanilla cake. It'll have to be a mince cake. And what else should we give him? Maybe... Maybe some sunglasses. I think Horsana would look very good in some sunglasses, Sammy. So let's give him some sunglasses on the 2nd of February. He will look very dashing as he goes about the Sabi Sands in his sunglasses after a good mince cake. We won't give Tingana any of his mince cake because Tingana has taken far too much food from him. Mince cake. Mm. <laughs> I suppose it's a bit like meatloaf, really. You can see he's now dreaming, Sammy, of his mince cake and sunglasses. He's very excited. So excited. He's just opened his eyes to say, Yes, please, that would be delicious. Mm, you see, twitching his nose in anticipation. Now, he hasn't wiped his mouth very carefully there. Jonathan, you say you're going to give Hosanna a diker for his birthday. Well, good luck catching it. Uh, but I'm sure he'd appreciate very much if you gave a diker to him. I think you should probably give it to him outside of his father's territory. His father is particularly adept at stealing his diker from uh, poor old Hosanna. You can just see, if you go in the eye there again, Craig, sorry... You can see the nictitating membrane there. See that? That's not his eyelid. They do have that little membrane that cleans the eye that we don't have anymore. That's very interesting. Kathy, you say a beanie hat. Yes, I think a beanie hat and some sunglasses would make him look very gangster as well. He looked tremendously gangster. Gangster leopard Hosanna. We just want him to look a bit gangster from time to time. We don't want him to actually be a gangster, of course. <laughs> well, Tristan seems to be still with his elephants, and they still seem to be playing. Indeed they are, so we can't really leave them. And why would we? It's just been the most magical afternoon with our gentle, playful giants. We really have had the most fun with these guys, and it's been non-stop with them. Uh, they've been in the thicket for quite a while, and as we've come across, they've decided to come out, and two young bulls are now taking over from the youngsters and are in a playful mood as well. And you can see, <laughs> shame, that poor one just wants to feed and is being tussed in the backside, which can't be very comfortable at all. But these two youngsters are... Also doing exactly what the others were doing. It's just all games and fun. And these two young bulls are doing it more out of playfulness and, and to try and practice being young male elephants. Look at that. How cool. <laughs> um, than anything else. I mean, it's not as quite as playful as what we saw earlier and, and not quite the same thing that's being displayed. These guys are more practicing for later in life and dominating each other, whereas... Earlier what we were watching was just youthful exuberance and them trying to intimidate us more than anything else. But very cool behavior that we've witnessed. We've kind of had it all this afternoon. We've had amazing, unique views of the herd. We've had playful adolescents. We've had youngsters playing. We've had suckling. We had all the females around us. And what we should have if we just patient is probably drinking Ellie's too because the Ellie's are not far from the dam camp. They are almost at that area, so they're just north of the dam at the moment, but slowly mobile towards that area. Now, Kirsty, I don't know if we can maybe go onto the flare if possible, which would be quite nice at some stage. Now, this particular shot is going to be delightful in that is going to be delightful in the flare. So there we go, big golden bits coming out the back end, as well as well. You can see he's a boy too because that's showing up quite clearly on the flare as well. Great time to have gone to the flare. I didn't expect that to take place, but well, it's worked out quite well. <laughs>
It's just how cold the ears are in comparison to the, the rest of the body and it brings a new look at that particular Ellie. Oh, lovely. Not ideal. I'm sorry. That was not the... That was not a very good timing at all. But anyway, I'm still still busy going. It's just not ending at all. I'm sorry. <laughs> what it is about animals doing that, I don't know what is funny about it, but it just makes me laugh every single time. But anyway, the two Ellie's are still playing. And, well, bathroom time was the perfect time for... Oh, play a camera into working. See how well the imaging actually works. The thermal, nice hot balls of dung that came out, and like I say, a bit of a golden member too. But anyway, they're still playing, pushing around. The rest of the the herd is slowly filtering through the thickets now. They're going to probably walk to the water quite quickly once they break this thicket, because this thicket will be the last sort of area that they'll feed. Once they're through this, then it's quite a fast march as they go towards water. And you kind of hear them around us they should start walking in our direction and kind of come on either side of us in fact some of them might even be through already and so we'll see them emerging at the water just now sorry Kirst, if you can just repeat that sorry there was much noise on the game drive radio which marshall no not actually elephants might appear clumsy but they're actually very 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 fleet-footed animals they move around quite a bit uh, the babies can be a bit clumsy and fall over themselves as we saw earlier when they were playing but adults are generally pretty good here comes our favorite little one that's bursting through the bushes with much glee and joyfulness it's just coming on our left hand side at the moment there we go emerging from the thicket just behind mom but they're not as clumsy as they look no they're actually pretty sure footed animals very seldom do you see big adult elephants slip fall or anything like that they're very calculated in the way that they go about their business and they make sure that they position themselves very correctly now what i want to do just quickly which is this is actually very interesting i just want to reverse quickly sense and get out of here because it's going to be really beautiful to watch these guys all come right through an opening that we have i just got to make sure i don't crash into any of these stumps so while i'm trying to look at you guys i'm also trying to reverse back without hitting anything because i don't want to damage the car but anyway, we're going to come back here, and the reason why I want to show you something quite interesting is that this herd is actually not just one herd of elephants, which is quite fascinating. We've been watching them all afternoon, and I've been saying that it's a big, big grouping that we've got with us, and there's an individual here that's quite easily recognizable that comes from a different herd that's not a big group at all. Its short trunk is, seems like she's here as well, so I thought I saw her around this bush, which is why I want to position myself over here because she should theoretically just pop out right next to us from these bushy areas she's just at the back so this is a big adult female that we've got closest to us and then behind that bush is where she should come out it'll be beautiful when they do come out towards us because it's nice and open here you can see also that we're right in front of the camp this is the drainage line that runs in front of camp and can you believe in 2012 that this was a rushing river and that this was you would never have even been able to put a vehicle anywhere close in fact we would have been underwater had we been in this section in 2012 it's quite staggering to see how much drier it is then then but short trunk should be that individual now that we're seeing the back of her is the second elephant from us so it looks like her i just want to double check if it is her it's going to be super interesting because we often talk about how elephant groupings generally stay the same and every now and then you'll see mixing and matching but if she is part of this then it means that the whole her herd has joined with a much bigger herd over the past few days and it would make sense because that little one there is about the right size for short trunks so i just want to double check that it's her it looks very much like her right size tusks right size body but we'll just have to see of course it could be another one that's also got affected by a snare wound but it does look like her let's just see as she comes through it is her i'm pretty sure of it so the trunk is the right length there we go so she's just coming through there you'll see if her trunk is not easy to see at the moment because it's down in the grass but it is shortened which is very interesting she's joined up with another big grouping and i wonder why that is i wonder if it's because she's just in the same area and this is maybe a distant family relatives that have come in and that she's been able to join up with very fascinating so we normally see her only in a group of four of them there's a small calf um, which is the one suckling and then there's a sub adult that's with her and then another bigger female 
and they normally are in a group together and, and then you find sometimes a young bull I've seen with them as well but she's in a group of maybe 30 elephants this afternoon and so interesting to see that there are others with her which is quite amazing I'm quite glad she's made friends with others So Lily aged seven. Hello Lily, I hope you are well. Nice to have you with us this afternoon. And you want to know if the mum died, would other ba elephants come and help the baby and look after it and allow it to suckle? So Lily unfortunately no is the answer to that. The other elephants won't do that and that's because generally any other female elephant that has got baby at the time and has got milk is trying to look after her baby and so it's important that she provides milk for her baby and make sure that she looks after it and so she won't have enough milk to feed hers and another one and so she won't look after it and that's why if you find an abandoned baby elephant the chance of it surviving when it's still very little is small if you have an elephant that is the size of this baby so around I would say this is probably around a four-year-old elephant then you might find that it would be okay it, it might not get fed by anybody but it's old enough that it can use its trunk and feed itself and the herd might keep it around and, and it will be allowed to kind of feed in amongst the herd and, and maybe just maybe will survive the problem that it will have is that very few of the elephants will defend it from things like lion and hyena and that would, might mean that it will get grabbed by one of those predators so as much as it sounds very bad from the other elephants it's just that the elephants know that they've got to look after their own babies and that's a full-time job and so taking on another baby is very difficult for them unfortunately Lily and so you find that most of the baby elephants that get orphaned generally don't make it unless people kind of save them and, and look after them and then reintroduce them but there's so few of that that it doesn't happen very often but here they come they're slowly emerging from the thickets uh, it's taken a lot longer than I thought I thought once they kind of broke through this thicket we'd see them walk quite quickly but I suppose there's not really much sun to push them for water and so they're just eating their way slowly towards that area and hopefully eventually will kind of go to drink it would be amazing if we do get drinking ellies as well as what we've seen this afternoon it's been a real elephant highlight drive for me i've thoroughly enjoyed it and i hope all of you have enjoyed spending as much time with ellies i know that you know the cats often get most of the focus but you know ellies are also important that's a very cool shot there's our fork tail drongo which is normally synonymous with an ellie herd and nice to kind of have the drongo in front with the ellie behind that's a very, very cool shot. Well done, Senzo. And I believe a lot of you have been thoroughly enjoyed our afternoon with our elephant herd. And I'm glad that you have because I would have been a bit disappointed if it wasn't the case. Because I really enjoyed myself this afternoon spending time with them. There's something about just spending a long period with Ellie's and just enjoying their company. That, Like I say, it's tranquil, it's relaxing. And on a blustery, cold afternoon, it seems like the most perfect way to have spent our early afternoon. There goes the little one again, catching up. Now I think this is a, might. It looks like the same little one. The mom looks about the same size. And here comes another one through. Now I wonder how much longer they're going to be in this thicket. They, most of the herd is slowly but surely starting to emerge and come through. They kind of quite spread out at the moment, and this is normally indicative of that they're not making their way to water just yet. The communication signal will go out when it's water time, and everybody's going to come much closer together, and you'll find that they'll get to the water as pretty much a solid unit and cross this open area as one grouping rather than, you know, just in single individuals. Good. Well, while we sit with them and wait for them to go for a drink, let's send you back across to Jamie, who's got the Kaina clan, who are showing a family unit of their own. Okay, so we have our answer about why these hyenas look so fat. They've eaten a wildebeest. So, we've had one rush in and steal a piece of bone. Soup is here with the vast majority of it, and then the cubs have all gathered to see if they can get any scraps of it. I wonder how long this has been sitting here. Probably since last night. Tucking in to the remains. There's Soup over there, granddaughter of the matriarch. Oh, Soup, did you have to stop behind that bush? She's just had a little bit of a scrap with this other individual over the fight. I don't actually know who it was. I couldn't see clearly enough, but she fought with them over this. Mm, Manu, what do we think? Backwards for Soup or backwards for Soup? Paisley, you're going to get a smack. Don't go in there. Soup will not tolerate that. Oh, here we come. There's more coming in. 
The Cubs are all racing in. That looks like Hershey. I think that's Hershey's going to take it from them. I'm pretty sure it is. That dominance. There he goes into it. Yeah, it's Hershey. Ooh, careful, Paisley. You're going to get your head taken off in that high rank circle. Soup on the right, Hershey, Waffles' son on the left, and the two cubs hidden between them, Lobster and Chow. Lots of vocalizations. Now Hershey technically is the highest ranked individual apart from Waffles and her new cubs. Hey, he's just taking it away. This is mine now. Lobster and Chow feeding on the other side. And Soup can do absolutely nothing about it. Just doing a quick glance off in the direction of where I last saw Waffles just to see if she's going to come barreling in. She might. Don't see her though. The rest are sent off with the scraps. And one jackal. Making its way into the fold. Brave and bold as always. There's no real question that Waffles' descendants rule the roost. This is the family of the matriarch, and even though that's quite a substantial piece of wildebeest skin, they are the only ones that get to enjoy it. Oh, tug of war. Is she? You've got some changes in your life up ahead. No longer the light of your mommy's life. Lori, hyenas smell pretty bad, to be honest. I mean, I'm all for bigging up hyenas, um, undoing the misconceptions around them, and, and the way that they're thought of by public perception. They absolutely stink, though. Honestly, there, there's nothing nice smelling about. Well, actually, if they haven't eaten rotten meat, they don't smell that bad. They just smell pungent, oily, dirty, doggy smell. But when they've been eating, they can smell absolutely foul. So can lions, though. Leopards very seldom stink. Wild dogs smell quite strongly. Oh, look at these cubs. So the low groans are made by Hershey, those are signs of dominance. The giggles are signs of submission and nervousness, and the, the, the begging sound that the cubs are making is called squittering, and that's them basically trying to beg. So that giggle is nervous, it's not a squitter, it's a nervous giggle. Oh dear, Jude, I don't think you're getting any. I think Hershey, I don't know how Hershey's missed out on this. Because he's not nearly as round-bellied as the females are. He must have been off out somewhere. Maybe on a territorial patrol. Definitely wildebeest. Soup standing over her two cubs. It's an interesting dynamic that. All the lower-ranked cubs relegated to the side. <coughs> no scraps for you. Bone. So this is the interesting thing. If Waffles were to die tomorrow, which of course I'm not wishing upon her at all, because I'm very, very attached to her, I don't know what would happen. Hershey's technically the highest ranked individual in this clan. He's a male. But he's only 20 months old. Oh, 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 oh. Careful, careful. Don't get too brave. 
you get a smack. Oh dear, here comes Paisley's mum. Paisley's mum, Billie Jean. She, if if Jude can't get a, mor a morsel, then Billie Jean's got absolutely no chance. Now that's Jude going down in there to look for scraps. And then here comes Billy. I think it's Billy. It's either Billy or a sister criminal. Alright, we're gonna sit and watch this play out because we're still missing one key hyena, and that is Fergus. So while we do and we wait for it, let's go and see all that activity that Ellie's have built up a thirst. Well, it's been a chaos with our two family groupings. It sounds like an amazing sighting with Jamie and the hyenas, and our Illies have now made it to the dam. Now, I do apologize because both the dam cam and nest cam, unfortunately, are not working, but our tech guys are on it, and so I'm sure between Alex and Conrad, it will be up and running soon again. It would have been so nice to have them for this because they've just really surrounded this pan, as you can see. They've all kind of made their way up, but it was very, very interesting is that Short Trunk was the first one to come. She's right next to us. She's the closest elephant we have to us. So she's this one right here, and she's probably very, very close. Don't spray us now, Short Trunk, please, because we are cold enough without water. But there she's just facing us. A few impalas that are going to have to wait for the eddies. Isn't that a cool view of an Ellie drinking. Anyway, we, she was the first one here. The rest of the Ellie started to come slowly, but what was very interesting is that the Ellie's that approached the, from the, the rest of the herd actually pushed her away, and she had to then move around and start drinking on this side. And I don't know, Kirsty, do we have our FLIR working, or is it also giving us troubles? Because I wanted to show you something while she's as close as she is, because it's very, very cool to see so if you look on the flare look at her ears look at the vein network on her ears how amazing is that now i've been really waiting to see the elephant ears in flare up close and now you can see it you see that big thick purple line that is running through her ear that's the hot blood going in and you see how it branches out through the ear and then cools down completely so towards the end of the ear is black in coloration so that's where it's been flapping and the the, the network of veins has spread vastly and so it's lost a lot of heat in that area and then then it's kind of the hot blood that's coming in and then going back out is the cooler blood it's really very very cool to see you can also see the secretion coming out of her face so that indicates that she's having some sort of emotion and probably around the water a little distress when those other elephants came up she had a bit of a go and, and kind of was a bit wary of it you can see the other one that's just coming in to try and suckle which is very cool but to see those ears in that much detail in in, in thermal is absolutely fascinating it's very very cool but now you can see when she comes into our main cam how close they are the rest of the ellies it's a short drink this afternoon i didn't expect it to be a long one short trunk are you coming right here this is incredible she's right next to us hello beautiful girl you are a very special elephant this is insane but just don't spray us please because you are we're right in the firing line i've used hosanna's little spot so if you ever wanted to know what it looks like when hosanna sits and watches things going at the on at the dam we're in his little kind of thicket that he likes to sit in and so this is the view that hosanna has when he watches everything come down to drink amazing this is so special to be a meter away from an elephant that's drinking it's very seldom that this happens and i don't know why she's being so relaxed maybe it's because we're in a little thicket and she feels a little bit better about it or maybe it's because the others forced her around here but absolutely beautiful now you see the impalas who've waited their turn are now coming in but they'll be moved off quite quickly because they'll give way to an elephant even though the ellies can drink wherever they want you can see that they will chase the impalas off a little bit just to make sure that they enforce that they are the real kind of kings out here isn't that very cool now that elephant's going to get pooed on i think is it uh, tail is out Ooh, that elephant's lucky I thought for a second there there was about to be a poop dropped on its forehead because normally when the ellies stick their tails out like that they're about to defecate it anyway that was absolutely phenomenal what a epic epic afternoon with these ellies probably going to leave them shortly and head off towards maybe the Nkumas as sunset but while we do that let's send you back across to James who's got well another predator but not one that's based on land No, not one that's based in the water either, but one that is based in the sky. This is the African hawk eagle, one of the African hawk eagles that lives not far from where we are sitting. They've got a nice nest here. 
in the far eastern sector of Juma. And there are a couple of birds and squirrels and things that have been shouting at this poor thing that is minding its own business for the moment, but of course will not be minding its business forever. On a warmer day, quite possibly be out hunting guinea fowl and franklins. Those would be their choice of prey, although they have been also seen going after black-bellied bustards, red-crested corhans. So it's a pretty large bird, that African hawkey. Let me just get the size exactly for you. And there's some elephants in front of us as well, which is quite exciting. Our cup is running, he's running over heavily today. Lions and leopards. So, 63 centimetres tall, and that is two feet, about one and a half kilograms for the male and 1.6 kilograms for the female. Now you can multiply that by 2.2 if you want to operate in the imperial system. So the female is about 300 grams larger than the male, which is, what shall we say, that's about, hmm, it's probably about 20% heavier, is that right? Five times three would be, 50, yeah, about 20% heavier. 15 to 25% heavier for the female. That's not unusual in the raptors. It often quite, often happens that the female is bigger than the male and the eagles. I'm not sure why that should be the case. I don't think that they're over imbued with testosterone as is the case of course with the hyenas. Maybe it's got something to do with eggs, carrying eggs, needing to lay eggs, being a bit bulkier so that when eggs are being developed they can still fly and hunt, I'm not sure. Paula, the very smallest bird we see here is a bird called the grey penduline tit. And I don't believe that I've ever shown you a grey penduline tit. It's a very satisfying saying, grey penduline tit. It's got a really nice sort of flow to it, grey penduline. It. And it is, I'll tell you exactly how big it is, grey, no, 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 let me look at it, and I'll show you a picture as well, so kind am I. Right, the grey penduline tit is only eight centimetres tall, um, there he is, that's him there, he's eight centimetres tall, that is about... Well, divide by two and a bit, say, call it two inches odd. Is that right? No, about eight centimetres. How many inches is eight centimetres? God, my brain has gone completely haywire. About three inches tall. About three inches long, that little fellow. They live in little flocks, and they weigh 6.5 grams. I don't know what that is in, in Imperial, but 6.5 grams is very, very small indeed. That's sort of, well, it's about as much as a tablespoon of sugar. That's what they weigh, about the same as a tablespoon of sugar. So that's a very tiny little bird. And they make the most spectacular little nest. And I'll see if I can find a picture of its nest. Yes, there we go. There's the nest. Now, that nest is woven from spider's webs and I think it's largely spiders webs. I suppose they'll use any kind of silk that they can get hold of. And you can see there that that is the fake entrance being constructed. And in fact, no, that's the real entrance. So what they'll do is they'll go in through that and then down to the bottom, but they can fold that entrance in. And then there's a kind of dead end entrance on the top that a potential predator would think, oh, well, this is obviously closed. So they close their little entrance up and they make a fake entrance. And that is the grey penduline tit. Good. Can we continue? There's some elephants up ahead. Ah, I believe that Jamie is having the most marvellous time up in the Marsi Mara with the North Clan of Hyena. So I think we should go over there for now. I always have marvellous times with the Mara hyenas. It's hard not to, really. Even when they're sleeping, they're cute, and they're definitely not asleep right now. So easy way to recognise... This fly is going to meet a sticky end. It keeps flying into my ear, sorry. I don't know where it's gone. 
I have no idea where it went, but it just keep, it keeps flying into my ear, and I really resent that intrusion of personal space. I've had enough of it. From the yesterday, his siafu in my hair, or last night's ants in my hair. Oh, see how those bristle tails for our new viewers. When a tail of a hyena goes up like that, that's a sign of aggression and dominance. That's lobster, I think, pulling the carcass away. Lobster, sorry. <laughs> Think. <laughs> Must have been Chow who took the rest of it. Oh, did you get yourself a rib cage? Let's have a look at Chow now. I think it's Chow over there. I've, I've slightly lost track. to chow. Always. <laughs> Shame. That's chow screaming in the background there and soup's the one on the left. Oh, lobster's now having to defend her ribcage. But she's taken it right, that's her there. She's taken it right into the middle of all the cubs so now she, she can't keep track of everyone. Oh. <laughs> Fergus chasing away the female. See? Male dominance over female, in this case, because of rank. Even though he's smaller and younger. Justin, you say that this is just so wonderful. It is wonderful. It's never... It ha, I don't think I've had one dull day with the hyenas. And Manu, of course, has, has been just as invested as I have. He, he committed to the spotted hyena where others might have chased glory of slow-motion cheetah hunts and all sorts of other things. <laughs> <laughs> but he has committed and learnt all the individuals. He knows their dynamics pretty much as well as I do. <laughs> Soup stepping in to show favoritism once again. Oh! Little wildebeest goes a long way. A lot more wildebeest is going to go even further shortly. They are wonderful. Never boring. Sometimes slightly distressing on the nose, but never boring. As wonderful as these hyenas are, the elephants of Juma are feeling truly comic today. They are feeling quite comedic today. This little chap was giving us a little charge. He held his ears out, he ran towards us, and he went... Brrr! And now he's a little embarrassed because we didn't run away in terror. So he's pretending to be eating leadwood. And his mother is definitely eating leadwood. He's a little fellow, probably about, oh, I'd say two or three years old. I don't know if this is the same her that Tristan had. It could be. Not the one that he's had now, but perhaps the one with the playful elephants in it from a little bit earlier. It is Leadwood that he's eating. See that very carefully. Oh, wow, look at his teeth. That's fantastic. Say, ah. That's it. And the tongue moving in and out. He looks like he'd have a lisp. Not sure why I say that. This looks like he's struggled to say S. Very sweet. Now the noise that elephants make when they trumpet, of course, comes out of their noses. And so MGN... I don't think that there's an age at which they cannot do it. So, as far as I understand it, any kind of trumpeting noise, so be it from a kudu horn or a trumpet itself or brass trombone or a nose like this thing's got, is a resonance of the air 
against the sides of the instrument that eventually make a sort of sound. And so as long as you can blow sufficient air out of whatever it is that you're trying to make the noise from, then it will, you know, it will make the sound. And I think that you'll find that an elephant can probably do it almost from birth. You know, as soon as they can blast air out of that nose, they'll be able to trumpet. My mother has a very effective trumpet on her nose, too. So it's about as loud as this elephant's, actually. It's very impressive to hear. I'm just going to sneak a little bit forward so we get a better view. There we go. Hello. His mother. <laughs> now he's a bit embarrassed because not only have we not run away but we've moved a little bit closer. And his mother's saying, Come on, don't be an idiot, let's move. We know these people, let's press on. It's dinner time, it's always dinner time in the elephant world. Eat, 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 they must. Attended by a little flock of fork-tailed drongos. One, two, three, four, five, I can see. Oh, how wonderful to hear from Poofy Poof again. Uh, I see you haven't changed your name yet, which is strange. Uh, Poofy Poof, they probably start eating solids, from, I would say, from a month or so they'll start to pick up bits and pieces of solids, wrapping their mouths around uh, leaves. I don't know how much they swallow, but definitely from very early on they will start trying to eat solids. They suckle for between two and three years. So it does sort of depend, I don't know what it depends on actually, I'm not sure why there's such variation, but two to three years is the suckling time. But they'll start eating bits and pieces of solid just long before that. They, of course, don't have theirs mashed up like we as human beings do. There's a very small thing. Now, that thing's probably under a year old. Let's see if it picks up any solids. We can go a bit forward, Craig. Let's have a quick look. For poofy poof. Poofy poof. Poofy poof. There it is. I don't want to get too close to these ones. How's that, Craig? All right? <laughs> so that's definitely, I, will, I would say, under a year old and definitely eating solids already. Trying to, at least. That's very sweet. Tiny little thing. Isn't that great? Looks so concerned. Eating a stick. I suppose it must be quite exciting when you're a little elephant and you're walking around and everything is basically food. But as I've said before, I'm sure it must get a little tedious as an adult. You have to keep eating again, again and again and again. That's very cute. I'm not going to move forward because the other two are very close to the road and I don't want to give them a fright. Little Drongos waiting to see if baby elephant unearths something interesting from the termite mound. So, really making quite a strong effort there to eat a bit of stick. You can see a little ear opening. That's where they hear from, of course. I'm just looking around. Ah, I can see its mother just to the right hand side. Mm, yeah, she's just sort of through that bush. Almost impossible to see. Isn't that amazing? Another drongo standing by very patiently. 
Ooh, now the very good news is that the Unkuhumas seem to be on the move. Well, they are on the move, which is excellent news. They've just gotten up and they're starting to move around and it looks like they're in high spirits this afternoon. Not only probably are they looking for food, but the youngsters have been playing. I've just been seeing them. Look, 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 you see them running in the background there? So there they go. They're running around all over the place, chasing each other, playing, jumping on each other. So it looks like lots of energy is going to be spent by our Inkahuma Pride. We've got one member right close to us, which is why we can't catch up with the rest that are playing. So when she moves, yes, we're talking about you. This is the female with the ridges on her nose, one of the older individuals in the Pride. But she's blocking us a little bit from kind of moving anywhere else but in the background the youngsters are still playing you can just see them the young males in the thick of it as they jump on each other's back and run after each other it's going to be magical to follow them if this is how they're going to be for the remainder of the afternoon i'm pretty sure they are looking for food i'm pretty sure they are going to try and hunt the problem is is that they are moving steadily in a northeasterly direction which means that they're going to go towards Buffalo's boundary quite quickly so hopefully something will be between be between them and the boundary and we can watch them actually go after whatever it is but you can see how well they camouflage the individuals in the background there very 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 difficult to make them out their coloration is absolutely perfect now this one of the sub adults is waiting for this lioness with the ridge to join them is that the young male it looks like it might be him he's got a bit of fluff developing around the chest area now of course there would be one female that's going to stop us from going absolutely anywhere there's the only place in this whole area that one of them has stopped and it would be right in front of us this is why we can't carry on very far at all and it's a bit tight for me to go around her I'm just going to end up disturbing her so we'll just have to be patient and wait but it amazes me how the sub adults still wait look they're still running around in the background there's just lions chasing each other all you see is tails and movement all over the place now here we go the female is up Yes, exactly, because everyone's got the sillies today. I don't know what it is. I wonder if Hosanna is going to get the sillies now that the evening is closing in. Now watch the young male. We're going to watch this adult female sense. Just be on the adult female. Look, look, here comes another one. So there comes another sub-adult who's just touching her. Now there is a male that's going to probably jump out as well. He's just in front. There he is there. He's very difficult to see, but I'm pretty sure he's going to come bounding out after these two at some point. Oh, they've noticed him. So there we go. There he goes. <laughs> How cool is that? Playful lions are very cool to watch. And these Inkuma sub-adults are as playful as ever in the last few times that I've seen them. It's been really wonderful to actually watch them. But as you say, Curse, the crazies are all over the place. Hopefully the crew will not be in the crazies this evening. Otherwise, well, DRC is in for a, a long evening. I, I think there will be much noise if the crew gets the crazies too this afternoon. I don't think so, though. Everybody seems quite mellow today when I saw them. But this is just so wonderful to watch. Let's just catch up a little bit. Hopefully we'll get a bit clearer views of them as they play. They're all in front of us here and actually changing direction a little bit. The good thing is the wind is pushing more from the east than it is from the north, which should mean that these guys will push more eastwards rather than northwards. And we should get a nice kind of view of them going deeper into Viotella. They might actually even go down towards the dam, which would be really first prize. They're just walking around here. Now in terms of how many are actually here, I'm not sure how many James counted earlier. Uh, it looks like most of the pride is here. It's difficult to say because they're all so spread out at the moment. We're just going to get ourselves into a better position. Hello. You guys have gotten so big. Are you looking at my blanket? Do you want it? Maybe I should offer my blanket. It is cold after all. She's kind of looking at my blanket as if to say, I wouldn't mind that to go and cuddle up in. I'm pretty sure Hassan has watched my blanket plenty as well, but it's been a good purchase, this blanket. Steph did a good job. It uh, seriously is warm, and I've thoroughly enjoyed having it over the last few weeks. I made a cardinal error, actually, of going out in shorts this afternoon. I don't know how James does it every day, because every morning, every afternoon, James is in his shorts, but I have no idea how he does it. It's absolutely freezing being in shorts and so it's quite nice to have this blanket when you make foolish mistakes like this it's not like I didn't know it was cold I just thought it wouldn't be as bad I should have known though it's a rookie error I'm afraid big yawn look at those teeth amazing to think that we've seen these little ones go from these tiny little fluff balls two years ago to these big healthy looking lines that you see now it really has been 
incredible to watch the Nkuma Pride go. And I hope that these Evoca boys, for some reason, just... I mean, we know that they have started mating with the Nkuma Pride. There's evidence of them mating with Amber Eyes. So, you know, you kind of hope that these lionesses are going to be skilled enough to keep these sub-adults safe because the last time we had a male changeover it was a very similar situation the pride was in a similar state and then all of a sudden you know the males came in and a lot of the sub-adults got killed and and even some of the adult females so let's hope that that's not going to be the case but what i do think might happen is we might see a split in this pride I, and i know i say it's with a bit of hesitance but it's could very well happen that we're going to see the three females with the offspring and the sub adults might split off from ambies and the youngest female for a while while they mate with the evokers until such time as these guys are old enough to to fend for themselves and do their own thing it's it, what ha it's what happens regularly with lions you've, you've seen it with the salala pride the mangan pride the mangan breakaways is that as male pressure comes in and if the cubs with the pride are not from those males then you see the split off of the females that are in estrus and they kind of form their own section so it wouldn't surprise me at the moment i see one two three four five six seven eight nine so i think there should be i wonder if all 11 are here Chris, did you have all 11 earlier with James? I'm not sure. Okay, so all 11 were together, which is very good news. It seems as though they've all stopped and they're kind of looking around, so I wonder if maybe something's lurking in front. While we kind of figure out if there is anything lurking and how they're going to go about the evening, let's send you back across to the chaos that is the North Clan Hyena Den this afternoon. So hopefully something is lurking, but for now, the hyenas have, well they've calmed down a little bit. I think they've established two guests to chew on the remaining bits of skin. It looks like Soup and her two cubs are tucking in. And as things have calmed down, some of the cubs, the lower ranked cubs, are getting a little bit braver and making somewhat tentative approaches. Oh, she's gonna chase you. Oh, there's Soup. So it's Hershey that's settled with the cubs to eat. Soup is so rotund. He's not going to eat much more. So the cubs are just licking up the blood where it's been lying, or the, the flavoring, essentially, that's scraped off on the grass because they've got no chance. Oh, you're gonna get, you're gonna get a smack. <laughs> Tom, with all of these amazing names, thanks to Michigan State University, you want to know if I were a clan member, what would my name be? help <laughs> um what would my name be i'm quite partial to digestive biscuits i don't know does that that doesn't that's not a good name for a hyena although we oh cubs scrapping help me help me put forward suggestions hashtag safari live on twitter if i were a clan member what would my clan name be um well i'd have to be themed my mom was a ballet dancer so, what would that make me? Well, one of the things she was was a professional ballet dancer. <laughs> Kirsten's, Kirsten's put forward a... <laughs> Kirsten's put forward a ballet name as as what I would be, which of course would be the beautiful story of the Nutcracker. <laughs> Thanks for that, Kirst. Um, <laughs> oh my goodness, that, that derailed me completely. Um... I'm, I'm open to I'm, I'm open to suggestions. <laughs> I first knew the name was I'm sorry, but one of the suggestions was Tiny Dancer, which actually works quite well. I like I, that that I that I could deal with. <laughs> Little bit of Elton, <laughs> Zephyr Zephyr, very good, very good. I prefer yours too. So Tiny Dancer would make me, because they, they abbreviate all of the names to four letter abbreviations and they have to be different for each hyena. Um, so that would have made me, I assume, Tina, for short. 
just in the same way that sloth bear is slobber for short, S-L-B-R. A tiny dancer would ab abbreviate to Tina. <laughs> oh, goodness. I don't, I don't know what my name would be. I unfortunately don't dance much anymore these days. Maybe in my own head. Sometimes in the privacy of my own tent. <laughs> Mr. Public says tutu. I like it, tutu. I was never a big fan of tutus. Do you know how scratchy those things are? I don't know how ballet dancers do it. That chul is so uncomfortable and you put them on and they never fit right and but anyway tutu tutu is a good one when i was at university if you if you got a, a two two instead of a two one or a first you you referred to it as a desmond tutu paula twinkle toes my goodness what a name for me as a hyena i like to think that i would be one of the high-ranked hyenas but you never know I might be one of those sad females that we never see because they're too low ranked to ever eat anything. Oh goodness. Twinkle Toes. I think the first person to call me Twinkle Toes might lose a... <laughs> Beck says... Be Beth or Beck, Gers, says the sugar, sugar plum fairy. <laughs> Still infinitely better than Kirsty's suggestion. <laughs> Sugar plum fairy. Oh no. Oh goodness, how on earth did we go down this route? <laughs> Any other further suggestions? I'm open to them. Let's 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 go for it. We've had twinkle toes. <laughs> Beck has gone into full detail here and said that my clan name would be Spaghetti Noodle, in reference to dancers long, quite thin limbs. <laughs> Spaghetti noodle, that's quite cute, I like that. Spanu for short. <laughs> Spaghetti noodles, yeah, it would have to be Spanu. Ah, Anna Marie, you know, in my time dancing, which was for most of my, my childhood and adolescence, um, Anna Marie suggested pirouette. Do you know that I never managed to pull off a neat, uh, this, I think, those moments where I did pull off a neat pirouette were rare indeed, um, especially the ones that ran counter to my natural body flow. I, I never got them right. So par pirouette, arabesque. I like the word arabesque. I could do quite a good arabesque back in the day. I'm pretty sure if I tried to imitate it now, I would be shamefully embarrassed. It's not, don't quite have that technique anymore. The safari guide job does not lend itself to much, although I have been doing lots of ballet bars in the privacy of my own tent, and I'm ashamed at how much technique I've lost. <laughs> I've got a very sore foot as a result. I like arabesque, because of course I'd have to be named along my mom's theme. <laughs> Christina, I do believe that the abbreviated name for Twinkle Toes could be could be could be Twit. <laughs> Hello, I'm Jamie. If I were a hyena, my clan name would be Twit. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> Your suggestions. The hyenas even laughed at that. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Wait till I tell my mom about this conversation. It's going to be very difficult to explain the, explain the nuances of it, but I'll do my best. I'll have to share it with her. She'll, I think she'll love it. 
She was also an aerobics teacher for a long time and an aerobics champion in South Africa, back when aerobics champions were a thing. Split? No, that sounds terrible. Definitely not. I, I'm going to end this conversation here because A, I need to have a, a really good giggle. I need to get it out of my system. And B, it's going to only be downhill from here. Let's go and enjoy the sunset with Scott. Okay, it sounds like some interesting discussions being had there with Jamie. Good stuff. We have incredibly beautiful solding in front of us here. How awesome is this? The sun's just managing to kind of break through those clouds a little bit. We haven't had any joy finding the lion yet that we were hoping to, but the night is still early, and at this stage of the evening, maybe they'll start vocalizing, and that will really help us. Out in the vast open expanse of, uh, expanses of the Mara, often stopping and listening is your best bet when it comes to trying to find animals. The roads are limited, and... You can often hear further than you can see. So I'm hoping that is going to help us later this evening. We're going to head off to an area where the sausage tree males kind of like to spend some time, an area called Milimambili. And on the way there, who knows what we may bump into. We've been getting kind of scattered herds. Um, it's really fascinating how they move around and they disperse from day to day. I was really expecting to find a lot in and around an area called the Salt Lick. But in fact, it turns out like these that we're looking at here have all kind of made their way already through the salt lick and decided not to spend much time there, which is interesting. They often like to camp out there. And if any of you are wondering why it's called the salt lick, it's an area where there's a lot of minerals, salty minerals that come up of the earth that are kind of spring there. So a lot of animals like to congregate there to get access to the salts. Greg Marshall, I think you would like to know something along the lines of how the animals may compete for food out here. And I didn't copy the question too clearly from Kirsty, so hopefully she'll be able to whisper it to me again. But I guess, um, yes, there is a degree of competition mainly between the, the predators over food. Um, but the herbivores, and you were asking about the herbivores, um, do they compete? Uh, to a degree, you may find you know some some level of competition happening especially during uh, times of drought but ordinarily you don't see too much competition between the herbivores they all kind of get along and co-feed in and around one another um, like I said it's mainly in times of drought when there may not be lots of food but also mainly around water points you can find herbivores being quite boisterous over water especially elephants chasing away other animals from water holes so um, yeah there's so much food around here Marshall that it would, wouldn't would make a huge amount of sense for the herbivores to get into so much of a fuss of the other ones eating their food because there really is, like I say, just so much to go around. Very, very good. Well, we are going to continue our search for lions and thankfully for you guys, you don't have to do any searching because you are hopping straight on board with Tristan who already has the Inkahumas. Right, now it sounds like we've got some major problems with our comms, Kirsty, so I can hardly hear you breaking up terribly, which is probably going to make life quite difficult. So if you can use WhatsApp or some sort of other communication, that will help. But anyway, the Nkuma Pride are up and moving now. You've timed this perfectly because they've been sleeping most of the time you've been away and all of a sudden have just started to wake up a little bit, led, of course, by Amber Eyes. She was the first one to get up out of this grouping and now everybody else is starting to move. The interesting thing is that they're moving kind of in a southeasterly direction we're almost on Aubrey's road now and then they, if they head in the direction that they're going now they're going to probably pop out towards the dam or somewhere in that sort of vicinity which is good news for Hosanna given that he's now got a kill he doesn't actually have to sit at the dam because otherwise he might have got a rude awakening in the form of these lionesses coming through so hopefully he doesn't go there for a drink this evening and rather use his treehouse but I would imagine that's where he would head for a drink so hopefully he just watches out with what's going on what's also been very interesting with the Nkumpa Pride of late is that 
they've been very very vocal so hopefully they make a lot of noise and allow Hosanna to be out of the way Lexi what is the biggest line I've ever seen hmm let me think about this Ooh, I probably uh, I'm just trying to think really hard about actually who would be really the biggest um the hairy belly matimba was was a seriously big individual he was in terms of this ecosystem so let's start out in the sabi sands he's probably one of the biggest um there was you know makulu from the the Mpohos that was a big boy as well um but i would say hairy belly was probably slightly bigger certainly the biggest tracks that i've of any male lions that i've tracked were the two matimba brothers that spent time around here um in terms of in general in, in any area um difficult to say i mean you know the the east african lions get a lot of a reputation of having really being massive lions but in actual fact their body size is no different to the lions here they just got really large manes which makes them appear so much bigger and so much stronger and really kind of healthy but it's just that their manes are bigger not their actual body and I, when i went to the mara now you know spent a lot of time with the male lions there and none of them were really any bigger than the birmingham boys or the matimbas or anything like that so i mean it's difficult to say it's always such a hard thing to compare when you see lions separated you know it's only when lions stand right next to each other can you work out who's the biggest but i mean it's difficult there i've seen one or two really big lions in botswana as well big boys in the okavango with massive shoulders i'm pretty sure wading around through those water channels gives them big big shoulders um so i've seen some big ones there some big lions in savo even though they have very small manes um it's difficult to say which one's the biggest i mean it's it's you know it's always one of those subjective things and you know rangers love to talk up any lion that's big in their area i know that steph will probably have a have a better idea but there was a male lion apparently at a place called interbeni which is where steph worked for a little while which is in the waterberg of south africa so quite far west of here and um apparently there's a male there that weighed well over 300 kilograms so and that's absolutely monstrous that's a huge huge individual so you know i i mean it's difficult it's really tough by just looking at them but in overall size and 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 just general appearance the matimba boys when they were full and healthy and big and at their prime they were seriously big boys and the mapojos were also not too small so it's you know majingis were big but not monstrous and birmingham's also big boys but not monstrous either they their tracks are definitely much smaller than both the mapojos and the matimba boys now hopefully this young male is going to grow up to be a fine young specimen of his own but he's going to have a tough path you know we've been chatting about um the paths that these guys are going to take and how difficult things are going to get um and and you know this poor male's really got probably the hardest he's got no siblings in this pride um we know that his the previous male from the Nkoma pride eventually joined up with a, a completely different male which allowed him to actually develop and to, to to become a dominant individual around the northern part of of the Manuleti and into the Kruger Park but his life is going to be fraught with danger he's going to have to overcome a lot of different things in order to survive and he'll be a beautiful male if he can survive but he's going to have to try and find himself a friend and so hopefully he can but now you can see he's busy stalking his sister that is lying down on the ground and she's just grooming her tail and i wonder if he's going to pounce on her he probably will do they seem to be quite playful it's particularly him there we go <laughs> so it's still some youthful exuberance he'll have to lose all of that if he's in any way going to survive later in life let's just try and move a little bit so we can actually watch him playing around i think no i don't think young lions playing like this pose any danger to us i mean there might be a case where they're a little bit over exuberant and run quite close to the car but they know what they're doing they've got really good senses they're able to see what's going on watch us and and do their thing and so the likelihood of us getting really any sort of danger from them is probably pretty slim i don't think we would really have to worry too much at all i've never had a problem the only lions i've ever had an issue with was when there was 
which is now what is known as the Mangan Pride, when they were a split off and they were still with the original tailless Solala female, they used to walk around a lot here. And in fact, I'm sure some of you might remember them from the live drives. There used to be a lot on Juma and Chitwa and Little Gari and be pr pretty much the lines that we saw the most. The Nkuma Pride at that stage was quite far north into Manuleti and Buffel's Hook. Um, but when they were around and they were young and they were the four youngsters and still under the care of that original tailless female and they were around this age, they got a bit of a handful and became a bit too playful. And what, how it happened basically was during this period of the year in winter, as we've been saying, we have blankets and it gets cold and hot water bottles are generally a must for many of the guests. And so they get these little hot water bottles that they put on their laps and blanket over the top and they stay nice and warm. And so what happened is that a whole bunch of people kept dropping hot water bottles and blankets off the side of the car and it's not out of any kind of malicious intent they just sometimes you follow these lines through the thicket and a thorn grabs the blanket off and you know it's gone and and those kind of things and those lionesses started to play with them particularly the hot water bottles and the blankets and eventually one lioness used to drag this blanket around all over the place and they learnt that they could get blankets off the side of the car because the car the blanket would hang over and then they would come and they would actually pull them off eventually and it got to the point where they were starting to put their paws on the side of the car and try to pull blankets off people People's laps and so that became a bit dangerous and we had to then stop it and all the rangers were told in this area that if you see any line coming up to your car you just start immediately and reverse and they it, it didn't last long it was only once or twice that they did it and then because everybody started doing that they then settled down and we never happened had it again but it was something that does does happen when they're younger so you've got to be a bit careful but when they're playing like this they're more interested in each other and messing around with each other than they are kind of to come after us and, and cause any particular damage to to us as individuals but you've always got to just keep an eye out and make sure that you watch what's going on but I can tell you there is a video of that one of the Mangen females pulling or trying to pull a blanket off a guest lap somewhere on YouTube it's there and you can see it kind of comes up and as she puts her paws on the vehicle starts and there's much oohs and ahs from guests I don't know if I can't remember if it actually got the blanket at that time but that was when it was decided that we need to be very very careful around those lionesses but I do remember the one lioness carrying a blanket around she must have carried it for about four days the same blanket and it confused everybody in the beginning because you had this big drag mark with these lion tracks and everyone thought it kills and then they found this lioness with a blanket and for four days after that all you did is follow the drag mark of the blanket and you'd find the lions good well the income pride is slowly but surely kind of waking up a little bit there's a bit of grooming a bit of playing so while we wait for them to really get going let's send you back across to the little chief and see if he's decided to wake up for the evening he has woken up in fact he's uh, being bugged by something some sort of insect is irritating him now he's having a bit of a stretch he's quite enjoying his little termite mound there i think we are in infrared, in case you're wondering if you've lost the ability to see in colour. You haven't. We are now with the infrared. And little Hosanna, possibly thinking about a meal, possibly thinking where the closest water is, because he does have such a fat belly. Craig reckons that's the only thing he's going to do action-wise this evening. Let's go off and fill that belly with a bit more water as opposed to a bit more impala. I don't know, Cheryl, why the bellies are so fluffy on all of these cats. Um, well, especially the leopards. But even the lions are slightly more fluffy underbelly than they are uh, on top. And, well, I mean, fur is there to insulate. And so I can only assume that it's because there must be a, a vulnerability to losing heat from the belly. Um... Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, certainly on some of the antelope, it's very thin on the belly, in fact. And in, in some cases, if you look at a zebra, for example, an old zebra, it's almost bare. There's very little hair at all. So I'm not really sure why it should be so f thick on a cat like this. And it's white, you know, of course. So they, you know, if they're hiding from something, they'll turn it away. They'll lie on top of it. Perhaps it's a bit of padding for when they're lying down. But I'm really not sure. Let's wait and see what this leopard does. We are now going to go all the way up to the Maasai Mara to watch the very same sun that has set here already going down over there. Well, we've got you just in time to say goodbye to the sun here in Kenya. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. 
we had positioned the vehicle here, hoping that there was going to be a long stream of zebra and wildebeest walking past, which they are, and they're actually just going to start popping into frame now. Any second, you should see the first zebra coming from left to right. Where are you hiding? Why can we not see you? Ah, there you are. Very good. And there's a whole lot more coming, so get ready to take some screenshots. Oh, this is going to be beautiful, running through the sunset. Oh, how awesome is this? Absolutely wonderful, and there are more to come, so hopefully there will be a few more opportunities for you to fire away with some screenshots. jean a very good job making these pictures very, very pretty. So well done, jean -Dre. And all of you who are taking screenshots, you can thank him for getting the settings correct. Beautiful. And now it's going to start getting into a really beautiful color. Oh, yes. Tracy, you say this is beautiful, and I think everyone on board agrees with you. Wonderful stuff. I really love the zebra up here. They've got such clean stripes with the black and white unlike the zebra that you'll be seeing down in Juma they've got kind of brown shadow lines a beautiful big fig tree here which is also just helping make the scene that much more special I'm just gonna keep quiet for a second you'll probably actually hear the clonking of the hooves there's lots of zebra and wildebeest that are about to come into your shot Wonderful. Well, I wonder where all these guys are going and why they've decided to go there, who they got their information from, or if they just kind of... At the moment, these ones are heading directly north, which kind of makes sense, because they're still moving further north into Kenya, away from Tanzania. But interestingly, on some days you see them running in the opposite direction, so there's kind of lots of backwards and forwards and chopping and changing with regards to their plans. But it is something that I always wonder about and wish we had a better understanding of is how and why they choose the kind of movements that they do. Because there's lots of zigzagging backwards and forwards, even though their general trajectory may take them in one direction. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Oh, Jandre, we've got some youngsters running from the left here. Action. Oh, they slowed down. They slowed down as soon as we thought we were going to get some action. Oh, but no, they're kind of not carrying on. But let's see. Once a few start running, then it may excite the others. Christina, you saying that this is a magic scene? It very, it, it certainly is a very magical scene. I agree with you. And it's so wonderful to have you guys back on board again. I must admit, it feels a bit strange. I can't actually remember when last I did a normal live drive. Probably nearly three months ago. So I'm feeling the pressure. Actually, <laughs> feeling a little bit rusty. It is great to be back with all of you and share moments like this with you because this is absolutely awesome. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. We still haven't heard any lions roaring, but the chances of that happening are only going to increase as the evening progresses. We are going to stay out a little bit after dark so we'll depending on what happens maybe get home at around eight or nine but yeah we're hoping to spend some time with lions after dark
in these migrating herds. Very, very exciting stuff. While we continue on our search, we are going to send you off to Jamie and the North Clan. Hopefully Scotty has a good evening. Our plans are quite similar. We're also going to stay out after dark, weather dependent of course, because even though these hyenas are very well fed, and they are very well fed, greeting ceremony here, higher ranked on the left, lower ranked on the right, that doesn't mean anything with spotted hyenas. It does, absolutely does not mean that they will not go hunting, running about, chasing off other clans, chasing off lions, doing all sorts of things. So you can never predict with spotted hyenas. You know with fat lions most of the time they're going to be flat. Unless you're right in the height of the migration and the wildebeest walk into them. But lion, <laughs> hyenas are an entirely different kettle of fish. Look at, oh, I thought it was lying with its belly up. No, it's lying on its side. And the lower ranked cubs have been desperately trying to get a scrap or two. This is what I meant about spot patterns. Billie Jean and Criminal. They are very, very similar. But speaking of colouring, Aaron, no. As far as I know, there'd be no examples of leucism within the North Clan. The, the leucistic hyenas on the Tanzanian border are a really, really rare example of that phenomenon. It's incredibly unlikely. Um, I don't know how many leucistic hyena there are in Africa, but I imagine the, hy the, the number is very, very small. So no, no leucism that I'm aware of within North Clan. Doesn't mean that they aren't carrying that gene and that it couldn't potentially express itself. It is, of course, res recessive, so it, you know, it would be really, really quite unlikely. But no, I have not heard of any examples of leucism within the, the North Clan. We're right up, I mean, obviously they're called North Clan for a reason. <clears throat> We're right, right up away from the Tanzanian border. As we enjoy this sweet scene of Zemo clutching the bone, just in case his mother tries to take it away from him, I have completely wasn't listening to who I was sending you across to, but I'm sure it will be wonderful. Well, Jamie, it's me. Surprise. No, it's with our Inkuma pride, and they're busy moving through the bushes now, as you can see. And if you have a look on the flare, this lioness that's right at the back, she's turned a little bit the wrong way. But just watch when she f turns to the left. She will a little bit, hopefully. And you'll see that on her left hip is the li oldest lioness with the big, bad injury. And you'll see how hot that injury is. Can you see it a little bit? There's a very bright spot on her left hip at the moment. It is very, very hot in comparison to the rest of her body. And that's not uncommon for an injury you'll find where injury is it often is much warmer than everywhere else but they've all stopped all of a sudden i wonder if they've heard something or they're just listening and i was saying now to senzo it would have been so nice if they had done this a few weeks ago because there was buffalo dung all three and the way that they're moving almost looks like there might be something around so let's just have a little look and try and double check but i'm hoping that lioness right in the front which is the injury will move forward and you'll just see how hot her hip actually is Unfortunately, she's a little far now. There we go. Let's see. Oh, there we go. You can see. Look how bright the hip is. You see that kind of white area on her hip? So that's where the injury is. It's amazing how it actually shows up. So you can actually show injuries just from looking at the thermal signatures of these animals. Absolutely incredible. You can see it quite clearly now on that top left part of the image where her white spot is on her hip which is very very cool so it'll be a help if we see animals limping to actually see how they are right well we're going to try follow them we're moving quite quickly now so let's just try and keep up we'll be back on our infrared now as we try and move through this thicket i'm going to have to put some lights on because i can't actually see anything otherwise so let's try and do that and the block we're going to go through now is about to be absolutely horrendous, which is delightful. We're going to be heading now towards Gallego's shortcut, but I've driven this block a few times in my life, and it is, well, nothing short of delightful. So there's one of the animals that is just coming past us on the right-hand side. Isn't that cool? So nice to see lions on Juma again, isn't it? It's wonderful to spend hours and hours and hours with our spotted cats, and we know that that makes me a lot happier, but it's just really good to have lions around on Jume again and it's you know it's 
you compare this to two years ago where Lions was a permanent feature, it's been quite tough going from a Lion point of view when the last few months we've really kind of struggled to get regular sightings. So thoroughly happy that the Nkuruma Pride has decided in the last few weeks particularly to come back and spend a lot more time. Right, I'm going to try to follow them, try to get through these thickets, try and keep up and see where they're off to. While we do that, let's send you back across to Sleepy Hosanna and see if he's managed to deal with his fly problem. Yes, the fly, I think, has been blown away on this rather miserable wind, and Hosanna is doing what any self-respecting cat other than those lions should be doing right now, and that, of course, is lying somewhere warm and sheltered. Is what he's doing. In fact, you know, if he wasn't lying there, I suspect I might go up there and have a little snuggle on the termite mound. It looks very comfortable indeed. And you see how he opened his eyes when I said that, clearly thinking to himself, oh, well, you could come and snuggle with me, but, you know, I might decide that you're quite tasty. So I won't go and snuggle with him. We'll just let him lie there on his own. He does look very snuggly, though, doesn't he? I can't imagine he'd put up with it if I got out of the car. Very nice to have the lions on the reserve again, as Tristan was saying. Very nice that they seem to be doing something other than lying down, heading down towards some water, possibly pick up an impala or two, maybe a kudu, zebra again. They are obviously quite hungry, but I don't think they're very hungry. So they won't be devastated if they don't catch anything this evening. Rosalind, on their feet, leopards have got four pads on the toes, one pad on each toe, and then they've got the sort of back pad, which is a three-lobed pad, and then there is a pad also next to the dew claw, which is basically where your thumb was, is. So if you take your thumb and you stick it halfway up your wrist, that's pretty much where it's positioned for a leopard or a lion, and there is a pad there as well. It's a very small one. He's a very tired fellow. Shame. That's a pity I didn't find him this morning. It really is. Or that anyone didn't find him down here this morning. Completely nowhere near where we thought he was. He somehow snuck across these blocks on these br in the blustery night, hardly leaving a track. Killed this impala, I suspect, as the wind started to blow last night. And then managed to find himself, uh, well, with a good meal and in complete privacy for most of the day, which is not something that Horsana really finds himself in very often. He's normally got us with him, or at least somebody else with him. All right, Tristan's got through his horrendous thicket. Let's go back to him. We have, we've gotten through these thickets finally with these guys and well they're still dragging us as you can probably hear by the car next to me being bashed by a few logs is that they're still dragging us through a few more thickets so they're just kind of going slowly stopping, listening, moving, stopping, listening so they're looking for food, they're on the hunt which is going to be interesting to see where they go the wind is still coming from the east so it looks like their general direction is east but you can see on the flare just how much better it is to see in the dark it really is quite special to have this technology on these cars and it's opened up the whole new world for us it really is interesting to follow and you can see how easily we're able to follow lines now i can tell you that with my own eyes i can hardly see these lines i don't see pretty i can see one individual which is close to me the rest of them are not visible at all and even in the infrared at the moment we cannot see them so all those lines you're seeing in that picture on the flare we can't see at all on our infrared which is pretty incredible you know that they're there but you can't see them so it's allowed us to view animals for that much longer and to also be able to keep with them for that much longer because we really struggle to follow some of the animals and we lose them in these thickets at night and this just helps us to be able to actually see them and also to sit a little further away when they are hunting so it allows us to be far more kind of 
what's the word for it? We, we don't interfere nearly as much by bashing through thickets trying to follow them. We can now sit back a lot further away and watch things play out thanks to these thermal cameras. It really is quite incredible at the level of detail and the amazing kind of look we can get. And isn't that a cool picture? Just this line of lines all across the frame is very cool. I think so. I mean, I don't know. I don't know lots of people are a little bit against the thermal, but for me, it's a in, invaluable tool that we've gained and thoroughly have enjoyed having it on the car most of the times that I've been out. It really has been a game changer from a point of view of being able to, to follow animals with a little bit more kind of a, a relaxed mindset and allow them to actually do their own thing and not really get involved too much so for me it's been a great tool and i believe some of you are saying that it's really awesome to see them in the flare now you will see a car that's probably going to appear at some point it's just on the right side of the lines so you can see the tracker moving about there as well doesn't look very warm does he the lines look a lot hotter than the tracker does the tracker seems to be quite cold on the front there and i can attest to the fact that the front of the the car is a cold place to be Right, now, unfortunately, those lines are disappearing. You can see where they are, so that's where they are over there. We can't see a single line at the moment. They're not one line that I can see. There are two cars there, and so I'm just going to let them kind of position themselves because we've been right in the front for most of it, and so we'll slowly kind of amble towards them, but it's been so nice to just follow them through here and, you know, take the route that I want to rather than the route that the lions take because I can just find them again with the flare which has been very very pleasant let's put some light on because it is quite thick in front should be a fairly nice gap just towards Gallego's shortcut because we're going to pop out right on Gallego's shortcut fairly shortly So, Lynn, no, these sub-adults will be starting to participate in hunts now. If we look at the Winyo Pride up in the Kenya area, those uh, lions are actually younger than these Inkuhumas sub-adults, and they are participating in hunts already. So, these guys will be hunting already. They will be starting to, to venture on the hunts, participate, try, and so they very definitely are a huge part of the Pride now. They're no longer just going to watch the adults hunt. They will participate in chasing and, and killing and they're going to be vitally important because as they get big like this they need to be able to hunt and kill they need to be able to provide food for their family as well as themselves because this many lions 11 big lions like this require a lot of food and they're going to be needed if they are to get all the food that they require Whew, it's quite bouncy here you can see we kind of bouncing along as we go the lions are crossing over the road straight they're going continuing straight east into the block and it's not going to be possible to follow them any further than where we are now where they're going to go now is into a drainage dip in front of us it's very 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 thick and very difficult to follow you can actually see the outlying area and as it's going down towards there so we're going to lose visual of most of the pride now and i know for a fact that the chance of us following them in there is almost zero you can't even see the rest of them with the infrared we can see them with the thermal that they're right up on the bank on top there but it's going to be impossible to get across so unfortunately for us that's probably it for the Inkuhuma pride this evening still nice I, I would hopefully the dam cam is going to be up and running later and I wouldn't be surprised if they do appear in that area we're just north of the camp at the moment um, well quite far north I suppose but they could easily invariably end up in that direction and we could see them so we'll just try and kind of keep an eye out and see what's going on but it's been a fantastic afternoon and so i'm going to start heading home and well one person who hasn't headed home just yet is james and he's with osana to wrap things up well i'm falling asleep here with this cat he's making me feel extremely drowsy I think the combination of that, the multiple layers of clothing I have on, and the sort of complete silence of the evening is making me feel like going to do exactly what he's doing and snuggle up in, in my bed. Obviously, I'm not allowed to snuggle up into my bed just yet. I'm on. Uh, I'm at work still. Yes, this is what a. Uh, this is what we describe this as work. Very difficult that we do very tough yes any we've got lucky today haven't we we had really good good luck here at Juma and in the Marcy Mara I'm not sure exactly what Scott had I think he just had migration didn't he but that is of course the greatest spectacle of the Masai Mara and he had lions 
and they were mating. And then, of course, we had the magnificence of that hyena den, which is really something very special. And Jamie's done a fantastic job of unpacking what's going on there and how she identifies one from the other and remembers who they are and how it all goes, I think is very impressive indeed. I always enjoy her little segments in our TV shows and in the rehearsals on the comings and goings and machinations and bits and pieces that go on there in the North Clan of Hyenas. I'm going to look at you again. There I am. Uh, and perhaps we should just have a quick look at the carcass again. It is in the tree there. And it would be quite amusing if we had turned the camera there and uh, Tingana was there eating. Oh, it is still there. Yes, it is. It's just behind that bright log. You can see its poor little hapless feet sticking out the back. Mm -hmm. Shame. That was a, an impala not yet at its first birthday. At its seven-month birthday somewhere. Hosanna. We only have 40 seconds left of our drive. Would you like to say hello to our loyal viewers? Good night to them, many of whom have watched you since the 2nd of February 2016, marvelled at your antics, uh, were very disappointed when you went wandering off, and were equally delighted when you walked back. No, you wouldn't. You would? Yes, that's it. Oh, yes, he says, thank you so much. It's so nice to see you all, but I'm going to sleep now. All right, everybody, we'll see you tomorrow at... Ooh, no, we've got rehearsal tomorrow, so it'll be at 6 o'clock. Until then, stay safe and happy. Good night.